channel, Mail Call, and tonight, um, hey, it's our third installment of um, Team Mantle's autograph. So, um, yeah, I've got these five packs of uh, 1991 Score um, Series 2, and uh, they're the only one, Series 2 is the only one with the randomly inserted Mantle autographs. So... Um, yeah, I also brought along some, uh, some good luck. Hopefully uh, I got the M&M &M boys here with me to help. I also, um, uh, again, on this channel, we're always striving for, um, um, to improve the channel and, uh, improve the, the quality and quantity or whatever of, of our product, our, our, um, <clears throat> our production so I've lowered the camera of the camera it's up there so now I have to duck every time I go around to do whatever but that's fine before I had it see before uh, I had it hanging from the ceiling fan very far away then I lowered it about I don't know about not quite six feet off the off the floor Still too high. I had comments, people saying, "Eh, still a little bit too high. We want to, we want to look closer. We want to see closer. Um, see what's, uh, see what the cards look like." Uh, hey, guy, how's it going, Thundercat? How's it going? Yet, yeah, yet, yeah, uh, pineapple skeet. Okay, welcome to the channel. Um, so as you can see, and uh, I've been just rambling along here. Uh, because the video is rolling and the video will be playing back later on. So my intro and all that has already been uh, gone through. Hey, Thundercat, how's it going? So uh, as you can see, now I've been, I bought, uh, a couple months ago, I bought these uh, packs. The guy had 35, just one shy of a full box at the flea market. I paid $20 for them, but it was worth it because, you know, you have the chance to get a mantle. I do. I do have a mantle in my collection already, as you can see. Um, this is a PSA certified mantle autograph. It's on some kind of advertisement card, but still, it's mantle. And mantle is my guy. I'm actually, uh, my father named me after Mickey Mantle. So you can um, use your um, powers of deduction there to figure out what my real name is. And, um, this is a PSA Roger Maris that I picked up when I was a kid. Uh, I mailed it away, and Roger was nice enough to sign it. I recently had it sent in and had PSA grade the card and authenticate the signature for me. And it came back as authentic, so I was tickled pink about that. Because if you saw my other video that I posted about my PSA returns, where one-third of my submissions came back as being counterfeit, so or not legit, or... Uh, they couldn't really tell if it was, you know what I mean? They gave you a whole slew of generic descriptions, whether it was pen pressure point or it, it, it appears that the, the individual uh, may have stopped and restarted or the signature somewhere along the line. Um, whatever. It came back as no good. Now, also, where is it? Darn it. I don't know what to do with them. Oh, here it is. I have not published a video yet because it's uh, at the editor still. But here, I'm just going to let you guys have a little spoiler thing here. So this past weekend was the uh, the card show over in um, outside of Philly um, at the um, casino there. And I went... I was hoping to bump into the Jabs boys. They were unsure whether or not they were going to go or not. Turns out they didn't go, so it is what it is. I didn't get to do a meet and greet. Whatever. It's all good. Um, I did have a a, uh, a friend's mail, you know, package for, uh, for John. I'll just mail it off to him now instead. But the main reason I went there is for this. So, yeah, you say, oh, it's just a JSA certificate. But what accompanies that is this Pete Rose autograph that I picked up. So Pete Rose was there. Tony Perez was there. Uh, Joe Morgan was there. Uh, Art Mahaffey was an old-time old, -time old uh, guy from the 50s. Uh, played for the Phillies and stuff like that. Uh, 
I better pull mantle. Why is that? <clears throat> yeah, so, um, anyway, I got the Pete Rose, and I'm stoked about it, and there's a little certificate that you actually put it on the card, so now the card is, you know, got that sticker stuck to it, but I was kind of, didn't know which card I wanted to take, I have several Rose cards, I do not have his rookie card, I would have taken it. But I really, that's when I first started collecting in 72. 72 is, I really love the uh, the way the 72 cards look with that nice archway. Here, we'll pull it down so you can see Pete there at the top. Um, I did ask him a question. Like I said, I have video. I have footage of the card show. It's at the editor right now. Um, and the editor, I will just say it's my wife, even though it's not. It's just me. But I blamed her for editing issues before so let's get into this let's get into uh opening these packs and see what we can get all right and um if you guys are canseco fans out there i picked that up at the show too i can see it but it will pull it down a little bit more this is a one and it's in it's going to be in the video but it's one of 25 yes it's one of 25 i know that Stickers right there in the way. I did pay twenty dollars for it, but after it's all said and done, the guy gave me a five dollar discount, so I got it for fifteen bucks. It is a um, Topps Museum Collection Baseball 2019, so it's brand new, and I don't have a Canseco autograph. I'm not too much into a Canseco's. But I did back, you know, everyone was into Canseco, the Bash Brothers, blah, 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 blah. So that's that. Now let's get into opening these cards because, you know what? I want another mantle. You know, let's face it. Who doesn't want more than one mantle autograph? So here we go. Open these packs up. And I don't know if you can just glance at the side and see what, if you got one or not. Because if it's a white card, there's a stack of white ones in the middle. And World Series card. Who cares? So, strike one. In this game, I play baseball, you get five strikes. So let's go. Number two. I'm going to be glancing over my shoulder. I'm going to have all packs. Only five packs, so it's impossible, but it's still worth a try. You never know. It only takes one, right? That's what they say about the lottery. It only takes one winning ticket. And, of course, I've always heard the other one, too. You can't win if you don't play. So, there you go. I'm playing. I am playing the game now. Again, there's 35 packs. So, I know it was inserted one, and I don't know how many cases there might be one. But... You see them pop up on eBay every once in a while. So you never know. And I don't know how you can check and see if they were all ever pulled or not. There's a junior, though. Nice. Put him on top. Ripkin. There's a Nolan. Ryan. Nice. Even though they're scorecards, you still like the players. I mean, regardless of the manufacturer, the year, the junk wax, the year, whatever. It's all good. And by the way, guys, tonight I I also uh, have videos that will be posted tonight as well. Um, maybe tomorrow. Uh, it's uploading now anyway. Um, I bought another... Um, 42 5,000 count box lot of cards I've been trying to get it for about a week and the people were telling me oh, well you know we had a $600 offer but the it was off of Facebook marketplace and it's like well we had a $600 offer I'm like okay well you know thank you and blah 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 
a couple days ago later the, the uh, little ad is still up there so I message them and I made my offer I started out at $250 and they said well we turned down 350 I'm like okay then I'll go 375 that was my counter and their counter was oh we just had a $600 offer I'm like okay well thank you you know I appreciate it um you know thank you for considering my offer at least um then three or four days go by it's still up so I messaged them and I said uh yeah uh, I'll go as high as 400, but that's it. That's my final offer. And um, the next day they messaged me back and said, can you come pick them up tomorrow? I'm like, yeah, I'll come pick them up. Turns out the guy's wife was pressuring him to get them out of the house. There was 42 boxes cluttering up uh, right in front of the door. He had them stacked right in front of the door as soon as you came into the uh, entryway. And she wanted them gone. And where he got them from was he has a contact who does um, um, estate sales and also um, buys um, storage lots. So that's where these came from, estate sales storage lot. So uh, I haven't looked at them. And my plan for those 42 boxes, my plan for those boxes. Hey, Chrissy, how you doing? Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I know I'm going up against uh, Eric Jabs and his auction. I was watching it for a while. Um, but... Uh, I don't think it's going over. I mean, he's making out like a bandit because he's selling cards at ridiculous prices to people. Um, but it's a little unorganized. For, it's the first one. I understand that. So he needs to get organized better with as far as his moderators that are calling the auctions now. And he needs to be on some kind of chat program, Discord or something like that, TeamSpeak, something like that with his moderators. So that they can coordinate things. And he needs a person to be always checking his payments. To make sure the payments are coming in. Uh, he needs, you know, three people there with him. Himself and two other people. One person check for Super Chats. Because he's missing Super Chats. Because he's preoccupied. Uh, number two, he can then just focus on what card do I want to put up next? What card's next? What card's next? You know. And um, the third person there can be checking the payments. Make sure the payments are going through. Hey, Tim, how's it going? Christian, how's it going, Christian? Thanks for joining. Um, you know, so um, it is what it is. Uh, you can see you guys that are just getting here. You missed it. I opened up the, uh, the five packs of score uh, series two. There they are. I opened them up and surprise, no mantle. But I had my M&M &M boys here to maybe try to bring me some luck. This is my mail and my Maris autographs. Um, this was an eBay purchase. This one I sent for when I was a kid, and it came back PSA graded uh, last year as authentic. So I'm happy about that. The Pete Rose you see in there, I picked up uh, Pete Rose was signing autographs at the, um, the Philly show uh, this past weekend. So I got got him to sign it and uh, they certified it right there it cost me another eight bucks jsa certified it <clears throat> that's a real easy one for them because you're right there they're watching a guy sign and then you walk up and hand it to the thing and he boom done and i bought this this is a 2019 museum collection um jose canseco i picked this up for 20 bucks <coughs> by the time i got shopping at the guy's thing i spent 40 bucks at his little stand uh, he gave me a five dollar discount. I said, "What kind of deal can you do me on?" And he says, "Ah, thirty five. I'm like sold. And uh, that was that. That's I spent like hundred and fifty dollars at the show uh, this weekend. Uh, I have a video that is loading that'll include all that stuff that I picked up. Um, but I saved my money because I also uh, right now uploading as we speak. It's um, going through the processing. I had to edit it a little bit. And because um, the um, the seller did not want to be on video, um, so, but I've been working on this deal for a week off and on with this guy. And finally, I was able to get the deal done because his prior sale and usually happens on these things falls through. And that's what happened. So basically what it was, was it was he advertises 40 turned out to be 42 
5,000 count boxes of cards. Now, these cards, I kind of just glanced at them real quick. They are mixed. They are hockey. They are basketball. They are football. And they are baseball. All years. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of junk in there. Junk wax era. But there's also some, uh, some cards from the 70s in there. <clears throat> and so what's going to happen with those 42 boxes is I'm going to use them over the winter to open them up and, and, and um, sort for you guys like I've done in the last couple of videos where because some I got requests from people. They wanted to see what I was pulling out, you know. So I said, all right, that's fine. I can do that. And wintertime, the yards, the, the flea markets and stuff are like the indoor ones don't have card vendors. I don't have a honey hole like the jabs do where there's an inside vendor and stuff like that. Um, all the vendors I deal with are outside vendors. So that kills me for the winter production of, of um, you know, content. So unless I run out and buy blaster boxes all winter long, um, I took $400 and I bought this lot. It turns out to be 210,000 cards. Plus next month, this guy, Art, who I buy off of, said he might have stuff for me for next month. So I'll have stuff, and maybe I'll have something for right now. It looks like maybe every other day I'll do one of those boxes for you. And um, also maybe if this guy, Art, then I might be able to have something for, you know, every day. I don't know. All right, Thundercat, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Yeah, Tim, I mean, I'm not a big Canseco guy, but um, I don't have a uh, Canseco autograph, so what the heck, right? Um, and it's a 2019, so brand new card. All right, Thundercat, peace. Catch you later. So, um, yeah, um, I'm looking forward. I really, It's really hard for me to not go ripping through those boxes, but... I have a plan, and I have to stick to my plan, and that is to be able to have content for you guys all winter long, uh, besides just opening boxes, uh, you know, blaster boxes or whatnot, or individual packs or whatnot, um, and so that's my plan, and thank God my wife went along with it, and she's like, hey, you know, all right, you have a plan, that's good. At least we know. I also was kind of given the ultimatum I have to, um, because now with this last purchase, I'm <sighs> 1.8 million cards. So now I have to find a home. Now I'm like that guy that I just bought these off of, where I have to find a spot. My garage is packed, quads, lawnmowers, uh, trailers, you name it, gardening tools. Everything is in my garage. I'm going to have to buy a shed, put it out back, move everything from the garage into the shed, and my cards are then going to be going to move down to the garage. And um, I may even just turn that into my studio and be able to do all my uh, production stuff down there. But we'll see how that goes. Um, it's not too well climate controlled. I'd have to work on some kind of climate control thing to keep it. Nice and toasty um, all winter long. I mean, it gets it doesn't freeze in there or anything like that. Uh, but you never know. Um, it is what it is. Um, so, anybody have any questions for me? Chrissy, I watched some of your stuff. It's pretty funny stuff, by the way, if you're still here. Uh, I could never figure out how you do that with your phone to distort your... Features like that. My my daughter-in-law does that kind of stuff with her girls. Um, but, you know. Um, I'm glad you're here if you're here. I'm glad everyone's here because I'm going up against jabs. My, you know, I have a, I have a Hank Aaron uh, autograph. But it came back as bogus. It came back as counterfeit not meeting their thing so um i have no other hank aaron autographs or anything like that um i have you know several aaron cards yes um but no um 
no autographs, no really old Aaron's. I don't think I have just like from the seventies, none of his early stuff from the fifties and stuff, but you know, it is what it is. So anything else you guys want to see or, or want to talk about, you know, I'm sorry about that glare. I still got to work on this lighting thing. Uh, Maybe get track lighting or something, or I'm going to have to elevate this a little bit. And I do have something for that. Again, we're all about innovating and and um, making things better, improving on the channel here. So let's see. I do have, I had to leave the room to grab these binders. I do have a bunch of these binders that I don't use for anything else. You say I bought this from an auction. Um, so let's see how that rolls everything over and um, puts everything on screen. Now this camera is pretty much at its max. I'm going to have to work on the extension and getting everything just right, but it's all makeshift anyway it may end up everything may end up out in the garage and that may be my new uh new home for this for my channel maybe the garage so that that helped get rid of some of the glare that's good um full sets of 80s uh, yes, I do. As a matter of fact, um, I have a guy who sells, who will sell me some complete sets of, get this, 1984 tops. You know who comes in that, right? Don Mattingly rookie card. Um, they're hand collated, but the Mattingly's are pulled out. They're laid on top in a top loader, and they're pristine. Let's see. I happen to have... Some that I bought off of him right, right over here. So let's see. I'll give you an example. Sorry, I'm digging around. I gotta dig to the bottom of the stack to get to them because they're uh, near the bottom of the stack of complete sets. Oh yeah. I still have. I have so much stuff to open up. Like I gotta open these up yet. I want to do them on the channel. I want to open these up yet. I mean, I have stuff, but I don't have. Enough stuff to sustain me through the winter. If I'm going to try to get to, you know, a, um, a video a day. A box of regular dung rust. All right, so that's 87. I got this this complete set at the flea market for 20 bucks. All right. And let's see. I'm like, uh, is the is the uh, Griffey in there? And the guy's like, oh yeah, it's right there, right there on top. It was open. He says he opened it up to make sure it was there himself. Yeah. I'm like, well, if you opened it up to make sure it's yourself. It was factory sealed. You shouldn't have had to open it, but whatever. It's like this one's factory sealed. And I don't bother to open that up. I didn't used to get into factory sets or anything like that too much. But now that you know, I'm a grandfather and you know, I'm trying to get my grandkids involved, even though they're girls, nothing, nothing, nothing wrong with being a girl. Just that, you know, you don't associate girls with baseball cards all that much there are the the few all right so put that aside 
so this is what this guy was selling me um these are 1984 tops open it up and there's the mattingly already set up and it's actually in a little clip down it's not a uh, it's not a top loader but that's pretty crisp mattingly so I've contacted him again since I purchased these off of him and he um, he's got other he's got 86 set 85 sets he's got some FLIR sets um, and I actually have quite a few people that I deal with I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of surprised that I've networked myself that much um, that oh yeah well my so my, if you checked out some of my videos there wicked you're gonna see I got my um, not I'm sorry Chrissy I didn't say it, and nothing bad about, about girls because we all need we all need our women in our lives too and it's really nice that they support our hobbies you know my wife supports my hobby and I support her hobby um, but my granddaughters you check my videos I have my granddaughters in some of my card videos and now the oldest one she's three and a half she's like all right wicked thanks for tuning in appreciate it um i talked to her again tonight you know they were at they're at um my daughter-in-law's nephew's uh, little peewee football game and the girls were there and then first thing you're saying uh, she goes happy are we gonna open cards because that's her that's her little thing she says in the beginning i say sophia what are we gonna do today and she's like, open the cards. And she loves tearing open the boxes. Well, that's cool. Two boxes of 82 tops. That's cool. Listen, um, I'm, I'm working on stuff. Um, my, I don't know if my, I want to set up, because the Jabs boys are getting away from their whole, like, uh, Friends Mail Fridays and stuff like that, which kind of surprises me, because I thought they were doing really well with that. So I'm thinking about picking up uh, that void that they're leaving. I've got I've got lots of cards now that I can you know send out to people as well. Um, Chrissy, you're a Dodgers fan. Okay, well you know your Dodgers are gonna meet my Yankees in the World Series probably. So yeah, good luck, Dell. Your Dodgers are doing great. This is three years in a row where they'll be going right to the World Series. Looks like it. So, sorry, Thunder, White Sox. Um, however, Trump got hurt tonight, didn't he? Or was that last night? Maybe it was last night. Um, Trump was taken out of the game. He's been dealing with a um, nerve problem in his, uh, yeah, like the old days. You're right there. I, I seem to remember the Dodgers may have only beat the Yankees once, and then they, after they beat the Yankees in 1950, whatever year it was, by 1957, they hightailed it out of New York, along with the Giants. They both left in 1957. But the Dodgers had great ball players. I mean, I would love to have, I would love to have a Sandy Koufax autograph, but he just doesn't sign. You're going to have to buy one off eBay, and you're going to have to pay a fortune for it, you know? Um, and never buy, uh, I said, never buy anything that's not PSA certified. The autograph, the card bit, like people have been sneaking by stuff by them. The Jim Mintens have been uh, being doctored by one of these uh, these companies have been doctoring cards, slightly trimming the cards, somehow touching them up. So, but as far as the um, the signatures, you know. Okay, Thunder. We'll be looking for your video. Five dollar blaster boxes, pharmacy boxes. What are they? They they the Fairfield boxes. I don't have them around. I had to buy them off of uh, Amazon to get them. And I can tell you, they cost me more than five bucks to get them off of Amazon. But I wanted to try them out. I wanted to check them out. <clears throat> Yeah, Kofax. I'd love to have a Kofax. I do have a Don Drysdale's. 
Um, I've submitted two of them to PSA and one came back. They were totally different signatures. You could tell the one that you could actually read the, the name Don Drysdale came back as counterfeit. The one that was kind of all scribbly, like squiggly lines uh, was his legitimate autograph. So it was weird. But again, a lot of those autographs I got when I was a kid, you know, in, in my late teens, early 20s, you know, uh, sending away to the stadium. It took me, I sent to Mike Schmidt, and it took three years for him to get back to me. Yeah. I, I didn't submit his to see if it was legit or not because it was a nice type letter with it. <clears throat> Duke Schneider, I've actually just this, within the last couple months, got two Duke Schneiders. So I got really lucky. Um, yeah. So I love collecting the guys that you can never get anymore. And my boss is a huge autograph nut. Like he's got over 9,000 autographs in his collection of just on baseball cards and index cards. He does a lot of TTM stuff. And I'm trying to get him into, you know, he does, you know, he bought some off of a TTM guy. But it was actually, um, um, you know, one of those tops cards where they're certified on the back uh, to get into more of that um i don't know exactly where the dukes are because i've been going through all my stuff how about this guys i know i know you're not yankee fans here but i am that's a nice whitey ford autographed relic and i love the old the old uniforms like the wool uniforms that's awesome and it's two colors it's like Wow. Now the autograph is on a sticker, but Whitey Ford no longer signs because he's got um, dementia, Alzheimer's. Uh, Tom Seaver. If you get a chance to get a Tom Seaver, you better get it now because he can't he can't sign anymore, and um, he's got dementia. So get Tom Seaver, guys. You know, he's not. Gonna, I don't think he's going to be with us very much longer. I've showed these already. Some of you guys may be new. I got that for 20 bucks um, a year ago off of eBay. That's, um, as the light still stinks, that's a relic uh, Biggio autograph. 20 bucks. That's crazy. Um, let me see if I can find that. Pearsall ever a Dodger? Jimmy Pearsall? I think he was. Wasn't Pearsall a Dodger there, Chrissy? My granddaughter pulled that out of a pack that we opened up of, uh, of uh, leather and lumber. It's Christian Stewart, but it's still nice. Uh, let's see. I'm looking for them. Right now I'm hitting all new stuff. Yeah, I think Pearsall, Jimmy Pearsall was... A Dodger and he went nuts and I read an article about him after the fact um, that and that's a Jimmy Pearsall I got I bought off eBay took a chance taking a chance with it but it was the only one that was here so Jimmy Pearsall he had 40 some years in the major leagues as coaches whatever a scout whatever and a player and he said in his book that the best thing that ever happened to him was go, he went nuts. The best thing. How about a Christian Yelich? Got that for like 24 bucks earlier in the year off of eBay. People say Yelich is a fad, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know what? I like, I like him. I think he's going to do really well. I don't think it was a fad that he had now strung together two good years. I know he's hurt, but... I think he's going to still continue next year right where he left off. 
So, but that's just me. I'm no, I'm no expert by any stretch of the imagination, and I'm not. I'm coming up blanks on my. Um, Oh, my Duke Snyder's. So I've got I've got one dilemma, guys. I got I know there's tape over his face. But I picked that up at the beginning of the baseball season. Bryce Harper autograph. But I paid a like three hundred bucks for that. I know I may have overpaid now because he's really stinking. I am not finding. I don't know what's here. I, I don't have many autographs. I got like, I don't know, 900. But. I did, you know, some in a lot of in persons, um, some TT TTM stuff through the mail stuff, and I bought a lot off of eBay at the start of the year. And my Duke Schneider is oh, here's one leather and lumber Duke Schneider. Oh, okay, Pearsall was a Red Sox. Okay, gotcha. Well, when he was at the Red Sox is when he went nuts. And um, he said the best thing to happen to him was going nuts because it made him more popular than ever uh, within the sport. So, I don't recommend it. I don't recommend telling your kids whatever you do when things start going bad, just act like a nut. You know, jump up on the backstop, start screaming and hollering at the fans and like the like they showed in the movie anyway, if you ever saw the movie. Um whether he did that or not, I don't know. Maybe he did. We were I wasn't there, so I couldn't say. That could be just Hollywood glamming it up, you know. Ah, yeah. So People ask me what I plan to do with all these cards. My boss asks me all the time, <clears throat> what do you plan to do with all those cards? Well, <clears throat> someday I'm going to probably turn around and just start selling them whatever my kids don't want. Here we go. I'll find that Snyder right now. Duke, where are you? <clears throat> I'm close. I'm closing in on the Duke. My other Duke, anyway. One autograph that I, that I definitely want to get is a Mike Trout. <clears throat> so, that's one that I do not have. Pretty expensive. But one day I will have a Mike Trout autograph. How about this? I know you got I'm a Yankee fan. Deal. Just bear with me. That cost me like three hundred bucks off of eBay, Derek Jeter. Hey sports car junkie, how's it going? Yeah, I mean TTM, there's a lot of people that still do it. I'm, I was surprised because I hadn't done it for years, and my boss got me back into TTMing, and then it went back into just collecting the cards. I bought this off of eBay. It cost $75. That's pretty – that's reasonable. It's a piece of his pants and um, autograph on a sticker, but still. Um, if you do TTM to, to Ryan's foundation – he charges 60 bucks, and he puts a little hologram on the back, kind of just like that Pete Rose thing, that Pete Rose card. I got this from Donnie Baseball. I put, got into one of his breaks. 
quad relic of I don't know who it was. I actually think I had a Dodgers at that time. Uh, Santana, Los Angeles, yeah. Dennis Santana. But the um, that's all that was available. Uh, so, other than the junk, the real junky teams. <clears throat> Where are you, Duke? I know. Oh, there he is. There we go. Found him. So here's my other Duke Snyder. Bought this off eBay, too. And I got it fairly cheap. I mean, it's not on a real card. It's on one of those SSPCs or whatever, something like that. TCMA. But these TCMA cards are even, you know, worth a pretty penny. If you have some of the, the earlier 70s ones, which that is from. I gotta get my glasses because I can't read. I left one pair down the stairs, but I got the other pair right here. <clears throat> hey, Frank's Car Corner, how's it going? Uh, yeah, the game. Yeah, let's see. I got D Jeter at shortstop. Um, here you go. I have Larson pitching, I guess. No, this is from uh, 1981. TCMA. I have ones from the 70s, too. Those are ones that are worth uh, a little bit more. I just got lucky as a kid, you know, picked them up. But anyway, for those guys that are tuning in late, I've already opened up and we came up empty to five. So I have... That was episode three. I have enough to do a couple more. I'm doing five at a time. So I think I had enough to do seven seven videos. So I got enough to do four more videos. And then I'm out of these again. I'll have to look for them. Like I said, I don't need I don't need a manual autograph. I have one. But I would just love, you know, the thrill of the chase to, and finally pulling something that gets you excited. That's what it's all about. Now I should... I don't know what I did with my counterfeit autographs. I was pretty upset. I know I didn't throw them out or anything like that, but I was upset and put them somewhere. Wish I had them. I could show you guys um, what they said was not good. So, anyway, so these are what we're just going to feature today. That Pete Rose is, and the Eminem boys. I love my Eminem boys. <clears throat> Anything else you guys want to talk about? Any questions for me? Um, I think I already said, I don't know if some guys are new. Out of those cards that I bought tonight, I mean, I, I was talking to the guy for like a week. And he said he had a buyer. Someone offered him. I started out at 250 for the 40 boxes, he said. $250. He said, oh, I turned down 350 I'm like, all right, 375 right? And no response after that. It's like, I don't know. And then I get one a day later. says, oh, we, we had an offer of $600. I'm like, okay, cool. Thank you for considering my offer. A couple days go by, three or four days go by, and it's still up, the ad. And I'm talking about on Facebook Marketplace. So, you guys, if you get a chance, use the the, 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 the resources are right there for you. Facebook Marketplace, that's how I find these guys. Um, I've got a couple guys that I deal with through Facebook Marketplace. One guy contacted me Sunday while I was at the card show. says, hey, I got a bunch of autographs for you if you're interested um, let me know. I haven't gotten back with them because I was waiting for this deal. This deal was going to suck up my funds for the month, basically. $400. I spent $400 on, um, 400 and, or 210,000 cards, 42, 5,000 count boxes. Now this one here, un unlike the last one I did, which was the last 210,000 card purchase I made. That one was 99.9% .9 baseball. Just from P 
peeking into these boxes, it's going to be a really hodgepodge mix of football in there, basketball, and even some hockey. So I don't know what I'm going to pull out of there for baseball um, quantity. I don't do the other sports anymore. I have my cards, my hockey, and my basketball, and my football from the 70s up until maybe the mid 80s. That's when I, you know, like totally stopped collecting altogether. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to end up with in these boxes. But the plan on those, for those of you who are just tuning in, is that I'm going to open them up during the winter months here because i live in new jersey and we do have cold winter months kind of but the flea markets kind of shut down except for the indoor portions and the indoor vendors uh, where i go do not sell cards indoor that all i get them uh, are people outside vendors that sell cards along with what other you know wares they have so when they shut down that shuts me down so then during the winter i'll have to be using that as um material for my um, channel so i can keep giving you guys content throughout the winter months uh to help people from getting cabin fever whatever but anyway they'll be trying to right now at 42 i figure if i can do one every other day that'd be great so every two days get a um sort box out and just sort through it um, however, my wife has given me a uh, kind of an ultimatum, um, and this started actually last week, um, was that I need to find a home for my cards outside of kind of the house. Um, so I'm, I'm going to buy a shed. I'm going to put a shed in the backyard, a 12 by 16 shed, and move everything from my garage out into this shed. And then my garage will be converted into like a studio, hopefully, to where I can at least set up and start doing uh, more content and have my cards right there with me. So we'll see how that goes. I'm hoping it goes well. Um, and other than that, that's about it. I'm gonna leave my M&M &M boys up there. I'll give you guys something to drool over. Give something Eric... For Eric to drool over for his uh, mantle collection that he's thinking about starting. Have you guys been over to his channel tonight, seen his auctions, what's going on over there? I was watching for well, know, an hour or so, I guess, and I'm like, you know what? I haven't put out anything in uh, two days. I have stuff, but I haven't put out any videos or anything for two days. And during that time, I actually lost two subscribers. I don't know why, but I did. But then I got nine more back, so I don't know. Um, keep an eye out. Hey, uh, Big Country Wheelhouse. You got your package? You opened it up? Guys, go over to Big Country's Wheelhouse and check out that package, that video for that uh, of tomorrow. Okay, we'll go over to Big Country's uh, Wheelhouse, um, sub him up. He's the winner of my 500 subscriber giveaway, and um, I mailed that package off to him. Um, big box of stuff, a couple boxes, of packs of cards, whatever. I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to spoil it for for you guys. You're gonna have to just go over and check him out tomorrow. Click that notification bell so when he posts it up. Yeah, Tim, you gotta keep you gotta keep producing content if you don't. Uh, people will forget about you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you you have to stay relevant, number one. You have to produce what people like. Like, this baseball card thing, um, if you check my, my playlist, you'll see everything else that I did trying to get, uh, find that niche audience. Like, I enjoy playing video games, and, and uh, that's what I do in my downtime when I'm not doing this content here. I go off and I play my video games, whether it's I'm not too much into World of Warcraft anymore, but I love first person shooter games. I do, especially lately. I've been, well, the last year, anyway, I've been doing a lot of um, the Hunter Call of the Wild, where you go out and you hunt big game and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. 
and the game fights back. You can they can kill you. There's lions, there are pumas, there are water buffalo, stuff that can kill you if you're not careful. Um, you know, you've got to earn your way up to get different weapons. It's a pretty cool game. Um, done a lot of the first person shooter games, the Call of Duties, the uh, Medal of Honors, uh, all the way up, you know. So that's. And I couldn't get a real big audience going because there was too many people producing that stuff. And um, so I came over to this, and this is another thing that I like to do. Cool, Tim. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> and so I found Jab's channel, and I watched it. I'm like, oh, this is cool. I can do that. Why can't I do that? Right? And I can. And I do a lot of the same stuff that he does. If you check some of his videos out, you'll see either I've already produced a video with something in that all of a sudden he came out because he found the same thing at the flea market and it caught his eye and he bought it and 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 vice versa. Like I'll go flea market and say, oh shit, you know, like Eric just had that on his channel. Now I don't know if you remember seeing Eric's one where he opened up the 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 little things with candy inside and they're all moldy and stuff like that the little baseball head like plastic candy holders um <laughs> like the next weekend i go to the flea market and there's a guy selling a whole box for like 35 dollars and i'm like yeah dude you know that candy is all moldy in there right but he wasn't selling for the candy either but he was way overpriced i was gonna like 10 bucks maybe i might have bought it but Anyway, so I'm thinking about, um, yeah, so I turned down a, the purchase of that stuff just because of what I saw on, on Eric's channel. Was that, um, so um, I'm thinking about some changes to my channel, not so much the content, but um, starting up a Patreon thing. And since, like I said earlier, the Jabs boys are getting away from the, the Friends Mail Friday, Fan Mail Friday, whatever. Um, I'm thinking about starting up my own now. I don't know how long it's going to take to catch on or whatever because people enjoy sending their stuff to those guys, and I understand that. But if they're getting away from that, then someone should step in and fill that void. So I'm going to try to do that and see what I can get going. I have a lot of cards. I, with the purchase I made today, I'm at 1.8 million cards. And so that gives me – but so now my sorting's all messed up. Because I get them, and I sort them all by manufacturer and by year and try to put sets together and stuff like that. Um, what I'm going to have to do if I get into this, I'm going to have to sort everything back by uh, teams and or alphabetically by player. Because I've got requests, and if you guys check back a month or so ago, uh, I have a follower in, in South Korea who asked that I, if I had any um, Chan Ho Parks, I'm like, yeah, I got Chan Ho Parks. So I took a you know a month or so, five weeks, and I gathered up a bunch because I don't have them alphabetized. I just, what I go through in my boxes, like now this 200, this last lot I bought, when I go through it, now I'll know, well, okay, I had a guy who wanted this. I had a guy who was asking for that. Okay, so I'll put it together. Well, I was able to get together 50 different Chan Ho Park cards and I sent them off to him. And the return that he sent me just blew me away. I mean, he sent, I sent him Chan Ho Park cards. You guys know who Chan Ho Park is? Was? He played for the Dodgers. And then maybe he played for someone else later on in his career. But he sent me back the 2019 um all-star team tops all-star cards that you order from tops you know um i don't know if they're living sets or whatever yeah so he sent me the national league team the american league team and then he included the the uh, home run derby guys the vladdy juniors um the the um there was the vladdy dude there was uh bill cards i'm like dude this this is way too much. And he was saying that how expensive purchasing cards are. give so much stuff to people. 
Um, so then I've got I've got um, another guy who, who um, asked about um, Chris Bolton asked about Conseco cards. I'm like, all right. When I as I go through cards, and it's been a couple months, um, uh, I put together some cards. So right now, I think I've got thirty. Twenty-nine different. I'm sorry, I was counting because I have them in an envelope right here at my desk. Um, and I'm sorry about the camera, but the camera is fixed. It's on it's on the end of a pole, taped to an end of a pole, um, stretched out over. So that is um, what I'm getting together for him. I figured I, I told him, listen, I'm going to get 33 together because that was Conseco's number. I'll send them off to you. You know. I do have, I had that 500 subscriber giveaway and, and, um, make sure we, I got to make sure I got to have him. I know I have his bell ring. I hope I don't have to go back and check, but big country's wheelhouse won that. That's going to be a great video. I can't wait to see, um, uh, look on his face when he opens that box up. Um, and then I have a 750 subscriber giveaway video that's already up and I'm getting close. I'm at 629, 619 now. I think. Let's see. Um, blah, blah, blah. Having out just for a second. Opening up a new um, browser. And so I have 629 subscribers right now. So I added 11 subscribers tonight. Good. Um, so, you know, as soon as I hit 750, or actually I have to surpass 750 because for some reason, like whether um, YouTube or someone does some kind of adjustment, it, it seems to drop down after a couple of days, one or two drop off. Yeah, thank you. I, I mean, I, I'm, I was I started out with 20 and that was like family and friends. You know, my sons were subscribed and you know, I had my wife make an account and subscribe to me, you know. Um, and co-workers and stuff like that. So I only had 20 at the beginning. And um, so, yeah, and that was, I don't know how many months ago, a year ago maybe now I've been doing this um, for baseball cards. I've been doing it longer, longer, longer than a year for all the other stuff. But um, anyway, so to um, go, you know, it's growing pretty quick, but it, it's not, you know what I mean? It, it seems like it's slow at times too. Um, but as soon as I hit 750, like 751, 752, I'm going to do the random wheel thing again and eliminate everybody down and have the winner. And this time it's, if you go to suit, go watch the video. It's, it's probably twice as big as the uh, 500 subscriber giveaway. And then the thousand subscriber giveaway is a little bit, a little bit more than that. I don't know what that's going to cost me to mail that off. Probably 50 bucks. I don't know. And then where the person lives. Um, I did I did for for a big country warehouse. I did one of those, you know, bulk mail things. You know, where they one price load everything up in the box for the for the 750. Um, I couldn't fit everything into the one box, so I have to send a big box and a small box, two packages. Um, and then for the thousand, it's going to be probably two medium sized boxes. I don't know. But, you know, it is what it is. So I know I've asked this. Have, have you guys been over to watch the, um, the Japs auction? I don't know if it's even still going on. No, it's not. A um, little hectic. I was there for like an hour watching. A little hectic. And I, I got to the point where I couldn't take it either anymore because it was unorganized. It was the first one. Granted, it's going to be that way. Yeah, well, you're going to have to catch the replay now because he's over with. He's done. Um, it's 1030, and he's in, he's in PA. I'm in New Jersey, so we're in the same time zone. Um, and so is uh, Big Country down in Georgia. So, 
and Gary um, is Gary. God, what's his last name? Gary S. He lives over on the other side of uh, Philly too. So, and then um, Mikey um, chasing Donnie baseball lives in North Jersey. Um, hey, guess why one hundred? What's up? Oh, you're California. So it's like seven thirty there for you guys. Nice. Oh, you're brother and sister. Cool. You're not in the same. I'm getting notifications across my thing. Well, that's cool. Oh, a football game. Who's playing? I don't even see. I don't even watch football anymore. <clears throat> I don't do any. I, got, I can't even really watch baseball until the playoffs. Um, it went last year to one Browns and Jets. Oh, I bet that's exciting. I mean, it could be. I don't know. I haven't watched uh, football in, in a long time. Super Bowl is probably the only time I watch a football game. <laughs> well, where are you from there? Guess why? <clears throat> what state? And or country. You could be from Canada. I don't know. Oh, you're all Cali. Well, that's cool. I'm glad I'm staying up late and I get... I get. I see why Eric stays up later and later and does his stuff because it, it draws in people from the West Coast. Um, I understand you guys don't get the uh, national on the West Coast. That's unbelievable. Like all the things that go on around LA, you know, um, you can't get the uh, the national uh, convention out there. Wow. Next year's in Atlantic City, and that's only forty miles from my house, and I'm booking on there. Every day I can. Check it out. Never been to a national either, so this will be the first time for me. Um, but should be interesting. Yeah, same here. I only watch the football. Let me tell you, it's that way everywhere around the country. Everywhere around the country, they're just not there anymore. eBay killed them off. What when survived the the um, junk wax era were killed off by eBay. There's very few, very few left. I don't know how they stay in business. To tell you the truth, they sell other things. That's why they do other things. I went into one for a national baseball card day, and they were selling like stereo equipment and stuff like that, and and game consoles and stuff like that and the baseball cards are in the back another one i was down in south carolina and one was doing like magic cards and stuff like that and having the magic game where they sit around their table and play their card their board games and stuff like that <laughs> don't, don't even get me started on the cost they're so expensive so they did and this is just my opinion they they almost killed the hobby with the junk wax era mass production mass production now they're going to they're trying to kill it by overpricing everything they charge so much used to be you could collect all the cards complete your set almost right you can go out and buy a box of cards and i'm, I'm dating myself for 13 dollars for a box of cards now it's 60 70 80 100 200 300 thousand dollars i mean who's got that kind of money you know very few people have that kind of money. Now the only way you can get really afford to get cards is you buy into a break. And then, even then it can be expensive. Your team is the Dodgers. Your team is the Yankees or whatever. It costs you over 100 bucks. It costs you over 100 bucks to get a Dodgers or the Yankees. Um, so, yeah, it's ridiculous. Um and, and so I spent $400 tonight on those 42 boxes of cards. Um, but it's an investment in my channel. 
Um, some people said, hey, why don't you do like breaks and stuff like that? Because like, number one, I can't afford to even front that money. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, and no, they're hot rookies, but are they really good? Are they going to be good? He can get hurt tomorrow, and their career's over. And then what? Well, I got a ghost in the room. See that? I slid my thing down, my sleeves down over. Don't you cover my M and M boys? Get out of there! What's wrong with you? Those are my M and M boys. Um. Exactly. So, uh, what do you do? Well, um, you buy into the brakes. And if you can afford it, afford it. Other than that, you look for deals. Now, I've got some newer cards doing the Facebook Marketplace thing. And that's, like I said, that's where I got those. A lot of my bought buys this year. Um, no, all of them. All of them came off of um, Facebook Marketplace. Um, and now I've networked myself with these guys. Like the guy bought off tonight. He said, listen... My name's Joe, and um, <clears throat> I have contacts in the um, uh, estate sales business, and um, there's uh, uh, rental um, storage things. He says, and uh, I got a guy. I'm going to call him right now for you. I'm going to call him because uh, I haven't talked to him in a month and see what he's got. <laughs> I get home. It's like an hour drive from where I bought them to get back home. And I get home. I just get the, the Jeep unpacked. I took my time. You know, I ate. I get home from work, cleaned up, ate. Then I unpacked the Jeep. And he calls me. He says, yo, this is Joe. I talked to the guy. And he's got, he's got yogis. He's got this. He's got that. He's got this. He's got autographs. He's got this. He's got that. I'm like, whoa, how much is it going to cost? He said, well, you're not going to get as cheap as you got the last lot. I said, oh, I realize that. He said he was going to get, uh, have the guy take some pictures. They're going to send me some pictures and see if, you know, if I, if I can afford it or not. I don't know. Yeah. But we'll see. So that's where that stands. The channel will be um, trying to get Patreon set up. Trying to get um, uh, try to do a, a friends mail Friday thingy since the Jazz Boys are dropping theirs from their channels. Uh, well, they've already dropped. Uh, Eric's already dropped it, and and John is gonna drop it. And I don't know if anyone. Some people are trying to do it too, so I'm gonna try to pick up uh, their void as well. And see how it goes. It may not go. It may not go at all. But, you know, um, we'll see. And I set up Patreon because I got like 1.8 million cards now after tonight. And I want to, uh, I'm going to tell my wife to turn her music down or I'll get a copyright strike. Hold on. <clears throat> oh, yeah. she doesn't get it. She's like, I don't want to be in any of your videos. I was a videographer once. So, anyway, yeah, she has, my wife has no idea what uh, YouTube is, other than producing stuff and all that. She has no idea. She just watches some videos. But anyway, so is there... Any other questions you guys have for me? Facebook Marketplace is a good resource for finding stuff. If you want to do bulk stuff, even small bulk stuff, it's a good start. And you network yourself that way. I've got Art. I've got Rand. I got this new guy, uh, John, now. Um, who else do I have? At least those three guys. Art sells to me every so many months. Uh, the last one I put up a video of Art was like a 45000 uh, card lot. I bought bigger ones from him. Um, this other guy, I forget his name, earlier, earlier, almost a 
a year ago, I bought over 300,000 cards from him. It was ridiculous. It was like 100, 150 boxes of cards. Now, they're, they're, they're between 5,000, uh, 4,000, and 3,200 uh, count boxes. Um, uncut sheets, uh, autographs, all kinds of stuff I got from this guy. He just offloaded everything that he didn't want. And I had to fill my Jeep, and I got a four-door Jeep. I've never, to buy stuff, I've seen them advertised. No, I've never. Yeah, I've never used those comments. I just didn't, the, uh, I just didn't, the com C people or whatever. Never really tried. It looked kind of hokey to me, that's all. I just. And now it turns out it's going to be a lot of, uh, there's always a lot of hokiness going on. PSA used to be the one that everyone really trusted, and they were expensive. You paid for it, but they got the best prices when you do resale. Now they've taken a hit. Their reputation has taken a hit, too. So I don't know. Yeah, what do you do? Um, I don't know. I still trust PSA over... I mean, Beckett's got to be reputable, too. Um, some of these guys, like from the James Spence, and I believe that's who did the Pete Rose for me, um, the JSA. I believe the guys from, from this, this, this certifying outfit here, JSA, James Spence, were... Um, Founders of PSA and or presidents and stuff like that and they left the company and formed their own company So something went was going on there at PSA Because why do your top people leave to start their own business and they don't charge as much as PSA? Maybe they just didn't like the pricing structure. Maybe they didn't like the fact that they were overcharging people all this money to uh, To uh, Grade your cards. I mean it costs so much to grade a card. I sent out to join, first of all, you can't even send to PSA unless you join their club, like a platinum, gold, whatever. I joined the lowest level last year, and it cost me $250. Now, part of that $250 went to grading 15 cards for free, so I submitted those 15 cards. But then I submitted also um, a... a you know, postcard size, let the graph autograph by Ted Williams. And if you're familiar with the Hall of Fame, blah, 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 I keep saying flame, Hall of Fame, the yellow plaques of Yogi Berra signed by Yogi Berra. I submitted them as well. The Ted Williams cost me $100. Anything Mickey Mantle is going to cost you $100. So they charge by a person's name, the athlete's name and their popularity. Uh, Yogi Berra cost me $35. So those two, the Ted Williams and the Yogi Bear, came back as not real autographs. So I'm at $135. I mean, they don't even give you credit. Say, listen, um, I'll give you credit, you know, say, I don't know, $25 credit. At least that keeps me coming back, you know. Well, I got credit with them. Let's do this. And I'll throw it out. Okay, and I'll spend another 100 bucks plus that 25 credit. So I'll get $125 worth of stuff done. After the first time submitting, they came back. First, it took like four months to get my stuff back. They're claiming backlog or whatnot. Hire more people and train them. I know you don't learn that overnight. It's an it's experience type teacher. You have to spend time recognizing the signatures. I know, and I wouldn't just want any anybody doing my stuff, so... Yeah. And you know what? I only took $400 with me to that. I did it at a card show. So I submitted everything right there at the card show. And it was last year, this time, at the same show over in Philly, the Philly show. And um, I had $15 left to spend. I bought like two autographed cards. Um, and that was it. Went home with two cards in my pocket, 
and four hundred dollars whisked away. But anyway, some of these other companies don't charge you. The JSA's, um, uh, I want to say, who else? There's some other ones that there's one that only charges three dollars per card to get certified. Um, no matter how many you submit, it's like three dollars, one card, three bucks. Okay. And they'll certify it. Um, you don't get that rate unless you submit a thousand cards to PSA. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, I don't know. Just saw money, op money making opportunity, and now they control the hobby. Like, the, you know. Uh oh, I think I lost my stuff. I just got a warning. So your connection is unstable. Please wait while we try to reconnect. All right, am I back? I don't know. I just had a warning saying my connection was unstable. That's the first time that's ever happened. I pay for the top the top internet in my area. Come on, Comcast. Do your job. Anyway. Oh, okay. So I don't know what that warning was. It came across the screen. Well, that's good. So I'm glad I got some California uh, folks. That's good. I would really have liked to have gotten more Korean followers, uh, but we'll see how that goes. Um, at least I have one follower in Korea. Never been there, by the way. I've been, I've been to Japan. I've been to Germany. I've been all over the basically a lot of a lot of the world. I've been to because I'm retired Air Force. Um, 21 and a half years in the Air Force. Served during two both Gulf Wars and in between the two Gulf Wars, I took a 13 year break. So, and then in 2003, I went back and finished it up, did 12 more years, and got my time in. And now I'm retired from there. But I still have to work because I'm too, too young to retire. So my civilian life now, I work for Boeing out of um, Philadelphia. And we build the uh, Chinook helicopter and the Osprey there. And that's what I do. I'm a mechanic and I just help build stuff. It's like building giant models. Um, don't work for the uh, Seattle facility and the uh, Charleston facility. who are going through all those uh, difficulties right now. Other than that, any other questions or anything? I don't know who's still here. I wish it would show you who is. It just shows the number of people that are here. That's it. It doesn't show who. I guess you have a list on the side. Who else here at least? <clears throat> I know Tim's here. I'm not sure if Chrissy's still here. And guess why I might still be here. I don't know. Those are the last three chats anyway. But guess why I was falling asleep watching the game. He may be the, the game may be watching him right now. I don't know. Oh, he's there. I woke him up. Yeah, so um what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start up this uh, fan mail thing. I and if you guys do like if you guys do other sports, like if you like football or whatever, I don't have a lot, but I, a lot of the stuff I got this year alone is like I don't I don't do anything with. Oh yeah, you guys live in the same town. I bet I bet Chrissy lives there too with you. Oh, okay. Her phone died. <laughs> Oh, 90 miles north. Ninety miles north. Nice. Let's see, have I been I've been to California once. Um I'm trying to think. Uh we spent the night at the base there. Um, which is kind of in um 
and then Northern California. Um, not way north, but north of LA anyway. Nothing's just going on. <clears throat> um, been to Germany, been to Hawaii, been to Thailand, been to Japan, um, been to Puerto Rico, been to Guam, several places in the, the U.S. Um, was lived in Germany for three years. That was my first uh, first uh, assignment. First base was uh, Bitburgen, Germany. Loved it there because uh, it was just like Pennsylvania, actually. A lot of uh, the early German settlers settled in Pennsylvania because it reminded them so much like home. Um, with just rolling hills and stuff like that. No big mountains or anything like that to speak of. And um, yeah, so is there anything else you guys want to see uh, as far as part of my collection? Because I don't know what you guys have seen so far. Um, you know, because this is like my fourth or fifth time going live. Um, I know um, he's not here now. Let's go back here. Thundercat was asking about complete sets. I have, I have a, <clears throat> I didn't used to collect complete sets, but I've amassed quite a few just through my networking with other people. Um, they were selling me stuff. <clears throat> like complete sets. Cards. I mean, they still even have like the factory label on the end of this thing here. Yeah, crazy. Dunross 1990 factory set, and it went to. I'm gonna get my glasses, but it went to some guy named James. James who? So original owner of this guy was a guy named James J. Reeves. And he lived over in Huntington, PA. 1990 Dunruss. Oh, no, he wait, he won this on a bid. He won this on a bid, and his minimum bid was $10. So I don't know. It says minimum bid $10. So maybe. I don't know, I don't know how long eBay's been around. Um, and stuff like this. If you guys see my flea market videos. So I picked up one of these at a flea market, and I picked up another one, um, I want to say, at a card auction. And that's another thing you can look for, card auctions. Um, what's this? 1990 Sunrise. Here's a complete set of, is it complete set? It says complete, 88 tops complete set. I mean... Still factory fresh in there, nice and neat. <clears throat> Even though it's a hand collated set, they were put in there and just left alone for years. Here's a another set of 84 tops, I believe. And then, boys, you're going to have to move a little bit. Thank you. Yep, 84. So... Um, I bought, I think I bought six of these off of the one guy who was selling them. He still got more. I contacted him. That's the mat, the year manly rookie card. I contacted him. I wanted to buy more because I wanted to do some giveaways on my channel, maybe, you know, and kind of have special giveaways. Maybe one of these 84 tops people, people like, like, there you go. So Eminem boys, you're going to have to move even further now. So here's. Here's the one I just showed you with the matting ring. Here's, oh, this is not one. What's this? Well, yeah, this is Miss Marks. This is it. it. Says it's 84, but where's the, uh, where's the Donnie baseball? Interesting that it's not sitting on top. It said manually pulled, so apparently the manually is not in this one. Some reason, Maddie was pulled out of this. 
Numbers the Mattingly card. It is number eight, so it's early on in the set. Why would they pull the Mattingly card? I wonder. So card number eight's right here in the front. And there's card number seven. And you can see it. And there's no Mattingly, there's a gap. So that's missing the Mattingly. Well, at least it says it's pulled. I don't know where it went. This may be something I got at an auction. It says number 34, so that might, that might have been lot number 34 that I bought. I went to an auction back in June up in Nazareth, PA. I know you guys are from California, so it's not going to help you that much. But here's one that I bought off the guy in Jersey. So that's got it. That's got it. I bought just these four off of them. That's got it. I bought four complete sets. And that's got it. So, if my, you know, I was planning on my channel growing and being able to maybe do giveaways and give away a set or two of these um, to subscribers, you know, for whatever, Patreons, whatever, whatever happens. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of trying to always be thinking ahead um, and not, you know, be um, behind the um, thought process as far as, you know, the channel and, and how I want to grow the channel and all that good stuff. So, like I said, I don't know if you guys are here, but I got all these here boxes here I got to do, you know, got to open these yet. These are all stuff that I bought it. Flea markets. Um, these were eBay purchases, and I wasn't paying attention. Um, wasn't paying attention, so I kind of screwed this up. But this, I bought one of these, right? This is a um, baseball card exchange certified box. And I'm like, yeah, well, we're going to do a comparison, and this is before the last uh, jabs uh, problem with the baseball card exchange, but I wanted to do a, a comparison and I'm like, oh yeah, uh, it's 86 Dunross. Well, no, that's the 86 Dunross. This is the 86 leaf. So there's fewer cards. Um, there's still 36 packs, but as you look, fewer cards. I wanted to do a, a pack by pack kind of just comparison to see you paid extra for this. You paid a lot less for this. You can still kind of do it, but it's not going to be 100% because this is the tops, and these were produced in Canada. So, And I bought two of these, or, yeah, two of these certified ones because it was cheaper to buy two than to buy one, and they both turned out to be the Leafs, which is fine. It's fine. I, I don't mind collecting the Leaf cards, but I don't really have anything to compare this to. And there they are. Still sitting in there nice and neat. 15 cards per pack. Must be the first time I even took them out. Fort Washington, PA. That's right up along the turnpike. Interesting. Guess they're not around anymore. So, and what else do I have to open up? I have actually quite a few things to open up. But, you know, always, you always, as a creator, and if you guys are really going to get into creating your own content, you're going to have to, unfortunately, it costs us money. Like, I'm, this is my next um, opening cards with the Chaos Sisters. We're going to open up these two uh, clearance packs, uh, series two, what are they? So they're Dunruss value packs, <laughs> ages nine and up. Well, they're combined, they're not nine years old, so... If you watch any of my videos with the Chaos Sisters, it gets pretty bad sometimes. But that's why I call them the Chaos, oh, Chaos Sisters. Now, see, I didn't duck enough, and I banged my head right on that camera. All right, camera straight now. Fly right. There we go. Now you guys can look at this other stuff. Don't matter. There's a Tony Gwynn... Um, Legendary Icons, Tony Gwynn um, 
relic. Picked it up for two bucks in the two dollar bin. <clears throat> and then I picked up this. Uh oh, is your sister still here? I'm probably getting holding on the screen right. If your sister says she's probably gonna go a little bonkers. Walker Bueller for two bucks. So patch there. It's Majestic Materials. The enclosed player used material is guaranteed by player used, not game worn. And Tony Gwynn is a game used. Tony Gwynn is game used material. <clears throat> and I found one of these again. So now I've got one more to add to my collection. Of course, I don't have 70 of these Desert Shield uh, <coughs> cards or how many John has. It's funny. I was serving, I was serving during this time and I didn't even know about them. A lot of them I don't think really made it overseas. I think a lot of them were black marketed, and that's how they ended up in the U.S. Um, you know, I got this for five bucks. This is from the National, I guess, because it says National Card Collectors Convention Juan Soto for five bucks, and it's I don't know, it's just some kind of sparkly refractor. It says BNR Juan Soto, whatever. It's a refractor for five bucks, and I picked up this Hank Aaron. National uh, Card Convention. I know you can't see his face because they stick the damn stickers on the front. It's actually it's on the it's on the penny sleeve. Yeah, and it's a refractor as well. So I got them for five bucks each. Then I picked up this Vladdy Junior card, minor league card, uh, Buffalo Bison's. Pro debut card number one in the set, tops. And then I bought this this little um, booklet. Got some stains on it, but still, it's probably from the '60s. This one's from the probably from the late '60s, maybe early '70s. Still scratch off, not written on, which is nice. <clears throat> Sometimes the kids colored them in, put their own scores in there when they did the rub-offs inside. So that tells me the rub-offs probably still intact. You know, two bucks each. I think I spent seven dollars on stuff coming out of that bin. And then I got these. You don't see these too often. The yellow checklist from the uh, 73 top set. Because these only came in the rare factory uh, sets the wax sets came with red borders so I'm picking these up now when I see them and they got different colored backs and a couple of them are colored in and then realize I grabbed I just grabbed everyone that was in the box and how to be two of them were giants but that's all right <clears throat> and then I found this 89 upper deck bonds figured I just grab it why not and as a filler, I grabbed this 75 uh, Bruce Keeson. And this Kirby Puckett. 86 Dunross. And this Barry Bonds. I'm not a big Bonds fan, but I don't know if I have the gold version of this card, the Topps Gold card. So I figured grab it. It's only a buck. And this one, 84 Dunross. Nice set, expensive set, and it just happened to have two cards in it. So I got 50 cents a piece. And then there's Barry Bonds. And I saw this Mickey Mantle in there, and I'm a Mantle fan, so I had to grab... I know I don't have this card in my collection, so I just added it. Playing Gears 51 to 68. And I have his 68 card, but I don't have his last card from 1969 tops. Do not have that. And it has an error card. The 69 mantle comes in uh, the last name in white letters or yellow letters. I'm not sure which one's the rarer. 
but that's what they can do. So, other than that, <clears throat> you guys do anything other than baseball cards? Hey, Preston, how's it going? I didn't go to the national, but your um, your army seventy five. Yes, very hard to. Okay, you do football. Yeah, see, I don't. I don't do any of those other sports anymore. I've got football cards from the sixties and seventies, and probably up to the mid eighties, and that's it. Then I stop, and I don't do them, but. Since you're new in here, I do bulk purchases like I did today. And um, this purchase has a lot more football in it, a lot more basketball, a lot more hockey than I'm used to. Usually I stress to the sellers, baseball only. But this guy's like, you know, dude, it's all mixed up. And you just take it the way it is. He's not going to sort through it. He's not going to separate it. So I'm like, all right, I'll take it. And by doing so, I got in good with the guy, and he's like, hey, my name's Joe, and I have a guy. I'll call this guy. He's got cards. I deal with him, and uh, maybe we can work together. So there you go. It's all about networking yourself sometimes, and, and uh, you know, that's what I do. I network myself, and I've got um, three people on a regular basis that I deal with and bulk purchases. Cincinnati NHL hockey. What was the Cincinnati team? I don't remember a Cincinnati team, but I've never heard of them. So where are they from? Like the 50s, 40s? I don't remember them. And I've collected hockey through the 70s. <clears throat> Real early 70s. Maybe not 70 exactly, but 71 or 72. Because 72 is when I really became aware of what's what, what the hobby was about. I was about 12 or 13. Um, and I've told this story before. I just don't know if you guys all heard it. But I remember... Uh, I was babysitting my um, my cousin, and when my aunt came home, um, instead of paying me cash, her boyfriend brought a shoebox full of baseball cards. And I'm like, yeah, I'll take that. And then I got home, and Opened them up, and inside there was a bunch of old cards from the 60s, and two of them were um, um, Nolan Ryan rookie cards for babysitting my cousin. So that's got to be like the deal of the century right there. Our World Hockey Association, WHA. Uh, I've never even really heard of that, so I couldn't tell you. <clears throat> I know I don't have any old. Cincinnati Stingers or Swords, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. I still think about back about that. Now, my aunt has since passed away, so um, I can't re-thank her or anything like that. But And her boyfriend has passed away, too. So um, I just keep them in my collection. I take care of them. Uh, I couldn't even tell you what other cards are in that box. Just that those are the two that I remember best to this day. They weren't, I didn't know it at the time, but it didn't take long to find out that all my Nolan Ryan cards were worth stuff. Are you done? No. I'm going to bed. Okay, go ahead. I'm going to go to put the dryer on for my wash. Okay. <clears throat> So, <clears throat> that's probably the deal of the century there. How many people would gladly babysit your cousin for a Nolan Ryan rookie card today? And they'd watch, they'd watch her for a week. 
for an online rookie card. So while I was at the card show, and I've already put the video out about that, I picked up these grab boxes. I'm figuring what the heck, right? It's like nine bucks. One was uh, five dollars. The other one was four bucks. So I'm figuring, what can go wrong? I just take grab boxes. Man, I didn't get nothing in these. Nothing. Like one Hall of Famer, I was so disappointed in the box. Like you're killing me, dude. The other box had a few few different Hall of Famers in it, but mostly just junk. And I even had some football in there. I'm like, really, dude? You had like four football cards? Well, this was the better of the boxes. <clears throat> What's this? A Goldschmidt. Uh, now Tuve. Uh, Charlie Blackman. Jacob DeGrom. Uh, washed Up Miggy. Cal Ripken. Gaylord. And that's it. Those are like the best cards in this box. Player-wise. So, the other one had like one Hall of Famer in it. And these aren't even Hall of Famers. One Hall of Famer, two Hall of Famers. He'll be a Hall of Famer probably. But the rest of these guys, don't know. So, technically it was a wasted nine bucks. I thought, man, what can go wrong? That exactly what could go wrong went wrong. The guy didn't put Jack in these, which was a little surprising. You know, I know you get a lot of Jack, but I thought I'd get something better than Jack. Nothing. What's in here? Harold Baines, um, Smoltz, Ryan Schmidt. So this was the better box. That was the uh, the worst box. Yeah. Eckersley, Dion, he's not a Hall of Famer. Who's this? Jock Peterson, not a Hall of Famer. Miggy, probably be a Hall of Famer. Hand is not. McGuire, not. There's a Ripken. Mattingly, Canseco. So this was the better box. But, you know, it didn't blow me away. Well, oh, is your sister watching? There it is. The old bearded one. Big old mutton chops. Yeah. But still. Anthony Rizzo. Probably not a Hall of Famer. <clears throat> How was that? It really wasn't worth it, but it was a chance. You can't win the game if you don't play. So I decided to play. And... That's about it, guys. I don't know how much longer you guys even want to hang around. I see someone else joined us. <clears throat> so, Preston, you were Army, huh? You don't have to serve me. I'm, I was enlisted. Not an officer. I'm going to the National next year, though. It's in it's like 40 miles from my house, so I'll be going there next year for sure. Check At least check it out. Like they say, you got to go at least once. It's like going to BlizzCon or Comic-Con, right? You got to go at least once. Which I haven't been to either one of them either, but you California people know what I'm talking about when I say BlizzCon, I'm sure. <laughs> Okay. Now, I hate to say this, man. I was just Air Force. Nothing exciting here. I just did my time, did my deployments, which was nothing compared to Army deployments. Our deployments were, you know, non, for the most part, there are some Air Force guys that do serve in combat zones. But my job, <clears throat> I was just a crew chief on uh, refuelers. And that's it. I did get to fly <clears throat> on a couple missions, but nope. 
Okay, Scott Air Force. Never been to Scott. Yeah, that's one thing I did hear from everybody that I've talked to that have crossed over from the Army, Marine Corps, Navy even, into the Air Force Reserve unit that I was in was, you guys got the best food. You guys got the best food. And I'm like, yeah, we also sleep in nice rooms and we don't have to sleep in tents and all that good stuff for the most part. I mean, we did at one point, um, but they were like huge mob tents. And then they weren't open bay tents. I had my own little cubicle. It was walled off. And, you know, you had your own privacy. You had your own little um, shrunk to put your, your clothes in and stuff like that. You did have to walk to go to the latrines and stuff, but, yeah. All right, uh, guess why 100? Catch you later. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for stopping by. And, uh, yeah. Guys, don't forget to go and sub each other up. You know, let's, let's help each other. You know, especially guys who have channels, trying to grow their channels. Help each other out, sub each other up, and, uh, you know, just help each other, right? Because there are all kinds of creators out there who want to create content, and this is one way to help them eventually become compensated a little bit for their uh, for their effort and their time. That's all. It's not a lot, trust me, unless you've got Eric Jabs with like 40-some thousand subscribers. You know, if you got a thousand subscribers, you get like, $150 a month in ad revenue. What's that? Like, that's like beer money, I guess, you know. <clears throat> that's all it is, you know. But, I mean, it's better than nothing, obviously, but, you know, obviously, you know, the goal is to continue to grow your, your channel and be able to create more and better content, have better, um, yeah. See you later, guess why? You know, you want to grow your channel. Uh, you're the creator. You get to control your own content. And like me, I would like to have giveaways and stuff like that, you know, more often than just at the milestones, you know. Um, so I am going to work on getting Patreons. I'm going to work on um, getting that uh, that Friends Mail Friday thing up and going. It doesn't have to be on Friday. My, my channel is called Mail Call. It could be just Mail Call Mondays, you know. Um, I don't get much mail anymore. Um, I started out doing a lot of, uh, TTM stuff and, or, um, eBay stuff, but, um, you know, I guess what it is. I'm not going to change the name of the channel. It's mail call and that's it. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, I, I believe in, you know. Oh, <laughs> wait, they got a, they got a Navy base in the middle of the country in Iowa. Like, is there an ocean nearby? How's the, where's the nearest ocean? <laughs> yeah, well, it can't be any, it can't be easier than Air Force PT. Of course, they're getting a little stricter now. I remember, um, I failed my PT test on my, my last year before I retired, I failed my PT test. And I failed my run. I passed everything else. You know, the, your measurements and push-ups, sit-ups, and all that. My run, I failed my run by eight seconds. And that guy banged me hard on it. He failed me. I'm like, are you kidding me? It's eight seconds, dude. And he's like, yep, you didn't make it. I'm like, son of a bitch. Back in the old days, the guy would have been, yeah, eight seconds. Who cares? Psh, I'll give you exactly on the button, you know. This guy was hardcore. He's failing you if you eight seconds. Think about it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they may have just had, I don't know, they could have all been, um, you know, radar guys or something like that. 
missile guys where they don't have to be on ship all the time. They could be land based. There are guys who actually have like land based jobs in the Navy. Few and far between, but it happens. So did are you are you are you retired now, Preston? Are you out? Are you still serving? I retired in 2015, uh, January 10th, 2015. Had enough. 21 and a half years was enough. Wow, okay. <clears throat> well, so yours was continuous, right? I had a 13-year break in mine. I first joined the... Uh, Air Force in 1981. I joined in 81 and I took a 13 year break in between. I got off active duty and um, in 2003, uh, a co-worker of mine convinced me to join the Air Force Reserves and I did 12 years in the Reserves and was able to retire with my pension and all that stuff. So... Yeah, but again, Air Force, you know, Air Force is easy. Um, it's not like you got to be humping a 50-pound rucksack, you know, or an 80-pound rucksack, a 100-pound rucksack. Uh, you don't do those force marches. I only go to the VA once a year. That's it, just to stay in the system. I have medical coverage with from my current employer, so I use it, but... You know, the day may come where I, I do need it when I retire and then Medicare is not enough and then I'll have the VA to, to help fall back on. Yeah, I have a, I have a 30% uh, rating for my disability. <clears throat> and they're nice. Uh, I don't go to the big, uh, the big VA facility over in Philadelphia. I went there once just to get my rating and stuff like that. I had to go through all, see all their doctors and stuff like that. But... Um, I just go to a little regional thing here in New Jersey. And yeah, they're real nice, you know. Oh, not. Thank you, Tim. You know, it is. I, I kind of I appreciate it, but it kind of like I, I always feel like I didn't. I mean, I did my time and all that, but I didn't. I know there are other guys who who did harder time in the military. I have friends, co-workers that were army, that were Marines, that served in combat, did, did tours and stuff like that. You know, or thank God, lucky enough to come back whole and in one piece. But still to be, you know, to be under that stress. Um, this one guy I, I work with, um, he's, uh, his brother was a Marine and he was in the army. And he was on one of those rapid response teams. So whenever hotspot came up, he had to go do whatever he had to do, you know, and go get on they were taking fire all the time and stuff like that. You know, it's like you never know how you're going to react until a lot of people say, well, yeah, I'll do this, I'll do that. Um, I was a police officer in Las Vegas after I got out of the, the military the first time. <clears throat> and that's the first time I learned about fight and fight or flight. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I volunteered, and the pay sucked. The pay wasn't the best, uh, but, yeah, I mean, it was all volunteers. Yeah, I, I was a cop in Vegas. I only did it for a year because I couldn't couldn't do what I wanted to do. I felt yeah, it was very low pay. I was making $501 a month, <laughs> and the recruiter says, you're lucky. President Reagan just voted you a pay raise. You're making $501 a month. And I'm like, dude, I was making more at my job. And the problem is I got laid off and I was unemployed for six months and I decided to do something. So, but anyway, um, being a cop in Vegas, I couldn't, I couldn't do what I wanted to do. Um, and I was there just a year 
and you're still, you know, you're still the rookie. You're still the guy learning the ropes. And <clears throat> um, I've been to too many domestic stuff. We end up separating the families, taking the children and sending them off to protective services or whatnot because the parents are fighting and there's mutual combat and you got to take them both to jail and the kids are crying and they're looking at you like you're the bad guy. You know, it always seemed like you're the bad guy. And I, I just, I didn't like that. I didn't like that feeling of always being the bad guy. You know, even though I wasn't, I joined to, to be able to help in my community and do something good and i was never really able to do that because there were so many um other factors that people you know that that caused me to have to react and act in a different way or do something like take kids from their parents and they're crying for their mother or their father you know and you got to take them off to give them to strangers you know Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. You get paid 24 hours a day. So, yeah. <clears throat> Seven days a week, you're getting paid. So I've been down that road, and I've been through the whole calculating stuff, and it's not it's not good to do that, that's for sure. You always got to take the good things that you do, the people you meet, the camaraderie, and all that good stuff, um, the friendships that you made over the years. <laughs> I went 24 hours. I'm like, you're paying for 24 hours. That's it. You know, if you're knocking off a piece with the old lady or whatnot, I'm getting paid for that too. <clears throat> but yeah, it's, it's, um, I know. Uh, so Preston, where are you at? You're on the West coast too. Oh, okay, Cincinnati, you're just about, I don't know, 10 hours from us, I guess. Night out. Yeah, I know, I'm up late. I'm up late. So we're in the same time zone. Um, and I've been doing this now for an hour and 58 minutes. I'm in New Jersey. I'm in South Jersey. But I know you got here late. So, like the title of the, uh, the the video was, I'm chasing after Mantle, even though I have Mantle all up. I opened up five packs, and here they are. No Mantle. No Mantle in these scorecards here. That the 19, 1991, make sure if you're going to get them, the 1991, the pink wrappers, 1991 Series 2. And it has a little yellow circle there that tells you the Mantle autographs. Very hard to get. <clears throat> Probably one in I don't know how many hundred cases or whatever. But the guy at the flea market a couple months ago had um, 35 packs. So I bought all 35. I paid $20 for them. And I figured I'd do different episodes and, and just do five packs at a time. And maybe you get lucky. Maybe you don't. You know, it's the fun of the chase, I guess, right? <clears throat> And then I brought my M&M boys out for um, maybe a little bit of luck. It didn't happen again. So. But. I have a, uh, for you guys that are still here, and if you haven't heard it before, I, I have a um, 750 subscriber giveaway video. It's already up. <clears throat> Make sure you guys follow the rules to be eligible. Subscribe. Make sure I can verify your subscription. Um, and um, comment on the video. Just follow the rules. I already know where you live, so you don't live in the you live in the lower 48, which is good. Um, and I pay for the shipping, you know. And um, if you want to know the person that won my 500 subscriber giveaway, the grand prize anyway was Big Cr Big Country's Wheelhouse. That's the name of his YouTube channel. He posted. He's posting a video tomorrow on the package I sent him. So I can't wait to see it. I know what he's got. 
I just want to see how he presents it to everybody um, on his viewers, on his viewers, and see how it comes out. Yes, Big Country's Wheelhouse. Make sure you ring his notification bell so you know when he posts it up. And um, yeah, I can't wait to see what what he he's probably gonna be floored by it. <clears throat> Okay, cool. <coughs> so, yeah, Big Country lives in Georgia. And I instead of having a single winner, I ended up having three winners. And so get this. I did the wheel. I had 25 out of, out of the 500 plus subscribers, 20, 20. Three or 24 people met the requirements. A couple people I couldn't verify their subscriptions. Um, okay, that's cool. Your wife's a southern girl. Nothing wrong with that. Um, so I did the wheel, spin the wheel, and finally got down to the winner. The first three winners, and I contacted them. I didn't just post it on my video. Guys, you got 48 hours to contact me with your through my email, which is in my about section of my my uh, youtube homepage, but contact me through email with your mailing address so i can verify it's you and we can send it off oh yeah well you're moving south that's good it should be warmer well, tennessee though you still probably get snow up in there too so yeah but it still get warmer be warmer sooner and longer And the first three people, no one responded. I contacted them through comments on their most recent videos that they posted, informing them, hey, you've won this prize. The first three people, nothing. I even gave them an additional 48 hours. Nothing. So I go right to the next, the next person on the list. Yeah, the, that was the uh, 90, 1991 score, Series 2, uh, that it comes in. Um, and out of all the score, that's probably the most expensive one, especially from the, those 80s and 90s. Those are probably the, the most expensive ones you can buy. And that's a little far away, and the camera doesn't have zoom on it. That'd be cool if I could have a mouse wheel and zzz, just zoom it in. But it's the pink wrappers from 91. They come in different colors, you know, like green, blue, whatever, yellow, um, for different years, too. But I think the only pink ones are from 91 Series 2. And you got the little yellow dot that says, look for the mantle. Um, so I went to the next three. And again, I went through the process again. And finally, uh, people started responding replying back and I was able to get this out now the third person I contacted I spoke to him during one of his live streams told him what told him what I needed right never gave me the information so I still have third place prize to give out and that's gonna fall back on to Don Blumdahl I have to let him know I've already talked to him earlier in the month uh, by a phone before I knew he was going to be the winner uh, one of the eventual winners because I've already talked to him I know he's subscribed and uh, everything fits he's he met all the requirements I just got to get his uh, mailing address <clears throat> yeah I don't understand like I mean I try not to enter a whole lot of drawing now if there's a mantle card I'm going to try to enter I'm going to enter for your mantle card but other stuff, I really don't need a lot of other stuff. I've got so much stuff. So when you guys get a chance, go check out my 750 subscriber giveaway. I shot all three of those videos the same night. I had everything lined up. I sorted it all out, separated it all, divvied it up, you know, and we'll see what happens on this next one, 750. See if people pay more attention. But I, I shouldn't have to go into your channel and tell you, you know you've entered a drawing. Go back and check. 
I was announcing as soon as I um, knew that I was going to have the drawing, I met the, the, the subscribership requirement. I started posting um, videos and telling in jab stream, you know, Eric and John, hey, my subscriber video is going up at this time here on this date here. I gave everyone like a week notice from my videos. If you're watching my videos, you'll know that on Saturday I'm having a drawing. I said I didn't know if it was going to be live or recorded and decided to go live with it. Wasn't the best because everything's a work in progress on this channel. But it worked. And, you know, people just didn't follow up on their own, their own, you know, applications. Let's put it that way. So the next one, 750, is going to be twice the size. I believe, and a thousand is going to be, you know, even larger. Now I know there's some of this stuff in that people may not want, like some old Beckett's, you know, older Beckett magazines, um, um, 1988 tops baseball card folders that you had when you were a kid, you know, um, um, packs of cards. I think um, not only did I give um, Big Country Wheelhouse, two complete boxes of cards, but I gave him like 35 or 36 random, not random, but assorted packs of cards, you know, from like 81 Fleer or 82 Fleer, whatever it is. I forget what year it was. Um, because it doesn't give, it doesn't show you on the box what year it is, but I mean, I gave him one like a pack of these. These are from uh, Ireland, right? 1989 tops. They're small cards. They're from Ireland. You know, I gave him a couple packs of these. Those are junk wax. I gave him uh, a couple packs of those. 87 Fleer. A uh, pack or two of those. I gave him a uh, pack of those. You know, I think he got a. I think you got a whole box of those. Maybe not. Maybe that's maybe that's seven hundred and fifty. Got a whole box of that. Um, you know, a pack of those. This is the one. Whatever you. Know, these are eighty-one flares. Eighty-one or eighty-two flares. You know, I bought this box, and I still have some packs left for giveaways or opening up on the channel, whatever. Um, You know, basically, I, I gave my rack pack. I got a, I got cases of rack packs. I got um, this one's empty. I got cases of rack packs. I bought um, these eighty-eight flare stickers. I mean, you see the video. It's the same stuff. Been going into um, the next giveaway. Like these, um, are these eighty, eighty-eight tops. I don't know. Oh, they are. I got like one. These are 89 tops, you know. Um, giving away some of these. These are 95 upper decks. I don't have, even have a couple packs left yet. Seven packs left. Uh, <clears throat> gave away some of these. These are a test. These are a test set. That tops put out possibly only regionally and they kind of fold open like an accordion like like uh, postcards and stuff like that they have different league leaders and stuff in there whatever so I put out a lot of packs like 30 some different packs I don't think any of these are in there because I didn't have these until just recently I already had all that stuff put together but uh, there were some you know, like these uh, 87 uh, Dunras. Some good stuff. So, I can't wait to see the video. And, of course, I want to, I want to see the... Uh, <clears throat> How do you enter? Hey, Alex. Well, you go to... Um, I posted my video... Uh, let's see, how long ago was it now? 
I shot it a while ago. Let's go to the playlist. But I, <clears throat> not playlist, videos. <coughs> so how many videos ago it was? So there's six. Eighteen, twenty-four videos. No, oh no, no, right here it is. So it's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight videos ago. It was. It says um, one week ago on the thing. If you do, if you search by videos, and it's called mail call. Today's video is to announce my next level seven hundred fifty subscriber giveaway. Right, currently it shows 92 views um, for the five for the 500 subscriber giveaway I had over a hundred views and like I said only 23 23 or 24 people became eligible so the rules are spelled out <clears throat> in the description it may have been talked about uh, but basically you have to live within the lower uh, 48 continental United States because I'm paying the shipping and you have to um, subscribe to the channel. You have to comment on the, the video, like what you would do. I don't care. You say, oh, I'm just going to keep it or I'll just do whatever. I'll burn them. Once you win it, they're yours. You know what I'm saying? Uh, most people say, well, they'll do a video and they'll, you know, they'll open some packs. Or they'll, they'll save some packs for later. You know, they'll use it for content on their 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 uh, channel, whatever. It's now becomes your property. I'll pop it in the mail and get it off to you as soon as I verify that it is, in fact, you, because some people try to claim prizes and um, have you send the package to the wrong place. So what, what's going to happen is once I get contacted by the winners, I will then have them, I will then recontact them through their channel to verify that they did in fact contact me and I will, um, you know, make sure that it is them with their address and then send the package out. <clears throat> but check out the video because it's a lot of stuff. I think it's actually going to be like four boxes of cards this time, not just two, four boxes of cards. It's going to be... It's going to be four boxes. <clears throat> so it's going to be. Sorry, Nick. Sorry, Roger. It's going to be a box of those. It's going to be. Oh, oh, I'm making a mess here now. It's going to be a box of those. So you got 90 upper deck. You got 91 upper deck high numbers upper deck high numbers i'm not sure what box this is because it came in different like series one series two i'm not sure what series it is there's one of these pinnacles um so we've got those two right those two upper decks i'll put them here somehow so you can see them we got this pinnacle and the other one's just the uh, cheapy box of 91 um, clear ultra but those are the four boxes that are going along with a bunch of other stuff some i got a couple of christmas ornaments i think that i so some of the stuff is stuff i won in an auction you know when i bought bulk auction lots and i don't want it i don't need it i don't collect it but someone else might. So I threw I threw a lot of that stuff in there. A uh, bunch of old Beckett's uh, from as far back as I said, I want to say <sighs> late 80s, early 90s. Um, the boxes downstairs. I already got it packaged up, ready to go. All I need is the proper address to put on it. And it'll be sent out to you, whoever the winner is. And... Um, more than likely I'll have a second and third place because I don't like it when there's only one winner, you know, uh, that's no fun for everyone. You only get one shot. It's like, okay, well let's get a consolation prize for my effort at least. So I, I want to, 
Like I, I never like it when I enter other people's things and there's only one winner and everyone else. Well, sorry, you didn't win. Um, give me a second shot. Give me a third shot. I don't know. But anyway, so um, what I did um, was for the 500 subscriber, I'll do the same thing for this, for the uh, giveaway, another box of this and another box of this. Now in this, in this 91 upper deck, it's the high number series. So there's a chance for a Hank Aaron autograph, right? Plus you get a shot at the Michael Jordan SP1 card that's in here. And Bagwell's rookie card is in here. Um, Mike Messina's rookie card. Um, you can't get the Bagwell rookie card in series one, uh, the low number series. It's Bagwell's rookie is only in the high number series because it's card like 755 or some crazy high number. Um, the Michael Jordan randomly uh, inserted one in like every three boxes I heard the rumors were. I personally opened up two boxes. Now, I bought two cases of this. I personally opened up two boxes already. Have not pulled one. I have one, one or two already in my collection, but I wanted to pull one. You know, I probably pulled one back in the day. I just forget that feeling, I guess. You know what I mean? Plus, it's nice. I don't get all jacked up like, like Eric does on his channel, screaming, salivating, spitting all over the cards or whatever. Um, I'm not a big showman like that. But if it's something really nice, like a mantle autograph, yeah, I might spit a little bit. But, um, you know, uh, that's just kind of, I don't, that's just not me. I, I don't know. I'm more reserved, I guess. I don't get all too excited about stuff. But, you know, um, I think it was one of these. I'm not sure if I put one of these in something or, or not. I don't know if this is in like a box of these or in there. I don't know if I put a box of these in the 1,000 subscriber giveaway or not, but these are 99 Bowman. Um, that's like the, the newest boxes of cards I have. I have nothing other than 1999 as the highest. This is 96. I picked up at a flea market. I'll be opening that up on the channel someday. These are 98. I'm sorry. So those are like the newest cards I have, and then I got these older ones. And they're not super old, but... You know, <clears throat> and that's it, guys. Um, check out that video. Yeah, so I got, uh, I bought them. It cost me some money, but I bought the, the bought them off eBay. So at the beginning of summer, I wanted to do, I wanted to do something. I haven't totally given up on it yet. Um, I wanted to do, I wanted to sell some stuff on eBay. I wanted to open up an eBay store too. And this is, this is the product I wanted to sell. Now I sent a box to Eric Jabs to review for me. And basically he does the same thing. Um, I didn't know it at the time, but he's got an eBay store where he sells like his packs in a hundred card lots. Well, I'm giving, this is a 200 plus card lot. Now, and I'm also throwing in a random free autograph. Now, these some of these are TTMs. Some of them are, you know, certified um, through the card manufacturers. If I can find the box that I had them in here, like this, like this. So these here will be randomly put inside. These are from, you know, the card tops. And this is actually a numbered one, like had a 974. You know, and I got here, and I got there, and I got there. You know, I got a bunch. I got guy called me the other day. Says I got more autographs. If I want to buy them, uh, I can get them for like a buck a piece. Now they're they're like I don't know. I've never heard of some of these guys, but I haven't collected these years, so I don't know who they are. You know, they may be someone. They may not be. Like who's Miles Head? Never heard of him. Who's Jason Hirsch, whatever. Who's Mark Apple? I think I heard of him. I don't know who he is. Uh, this is Corey Spangenberger. I heard of him, right? But this is when he was a prospect. Now I, 
Uh, he's got actual rookie cards out, I think. Bruce Maxwell, I've heard of him. He's a catcher. Now, this guy, this guy, Bruce Maxwell, kind of pisses me off a little bit because he's an Army brat. You still here, Preston? He's an Army brat, right? And he does not stand during the National Anthem. He's the only major leaguer that I know of that does not stand for the national anthem. Kind of pisses me off. You're an army brat. Jeez. Again, what's his father going to say? His father's going to say, well, I support my son. Of course, that's that's the fatherly thing to do. But I just think it's a little disrespectful for everyone who's served and fought and given their life. Not so much for me. I, I don't care for me. I care about the guys, the guys out in the field, the guys who died protecting this country for their rights to protest. I know there are different ways to look at it. They're right to protest. But, you know, you're an army brat. You've lived a little bit of that life. You know, I don't know. I just don't see how an army brat can do that. But it is what it is. Yeah, like I can't, I, I really don't believe it when some people say, oh, they're okay with it. I really don't believe that a whole lot of military people are okay with that. I just, don't believe it. I think that's bullshit, whoever says that, because a lot of people I know, a lot of people I work with are prior military um, that get upset about that. I'm so glad that football or, or that baseball, they do stand for it. They do. They, they, they just go along and they, they know right from wrong for some reason. Whereas football has got so many rebellious attitudes. I don't know. It, it pisses me off. That's all. And that's just that's just me. My opinion. I, I Believe me. I One thing. There's two things I don't believe in. Talking politics. Um, and talking um, religion. Whether at work. On your channel. Look what happened to the Dixie Chicks. Right? When they said something about Bush. They were almost destroyed by that. That's the one guy right there. That's the one guy. And I don't know if he's doing it this year or not, but that's the guy, Maxwell. Look him up. He's an army brat, too. First, I had a lot of respect for him, but then when I see he, he's not standing for it, it's like, pfft. all right. You know, look at, look at, look at, um, I know it's been a while. Um, Ah, hold on. Player for the Cardinals, the uh, football player who, uh, you know, friendly fire incident. Um, you know, Preston, you know what I'm talking about. Football player for the Cardinals, um, Army guy, gave up his football career, millions of dollars a year to play football. Yes, Pat Tillman, thank you very much. Pat Tillman gave his life for this country. They were engaged in combat. He was accidentally, accidentally killed. I, I don't know. I'm gonna go with that story. But he was engaged in combat. His platoon, his squad. That's the story. I'm. That's a story I heard. And uh, yeah, it was friendly fire incident. But um, that guy, he didn't have to do that. He did not have to do that. But he's a patriot. And I, I, not for nothing, guys. Um, I live in the Northeast, and I've been down South like once, but I've talked to people from the South and stuff, and to me, they're so much more respectful and um, um, patriotic than a lot of other states in this country. Like, you know, that's why, um, Preston, when you said, when you served me, I said, you don't have to serve me. Because um, people in the South serve you all the time, you know. And how about this? I, I if you got any of you guys go to follow Danny and Gray's Cards and Toys. Well, I follow him. I watch him, and, and I try to watch all his videos and give him as much uh, airtime as I can to help his channel grow, too. Um, there's not many people's channels in here. I do not watch all the way through. 
Um, there's times I will open up five or six web browser pages and have, because if I'm running behind, um, I'll open up all their channels. I may have to put one on mute while I listen to one, but I'll make sure I play their videos all the way through because the average, well, Danny and Gray's Cards and Toys, um, he does a lot of NASCAR stuff, right? He does a ton of TTM. And he's always getting returns, always getting. Um... No, I can't. I, I don't have it up and running yet. Yeah, that's my fault. I'm really slow. But I may just do that through, um, you know, through my Patreon thing or something like that. Just sell them that way. Instead of doing like guys, are, they sell their breaks through their Patreon. Maybe I'll just sell those things that way. I, I'm sorry. I didn't even show you what was inside there. I just set it out here and teased you with it. So I, I stopped short. I stopped at the autograph. So so you get one random autograph. And then I was just throwing in like these mini cards. That's just a filler thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, But 91 uh, upper deck, 89 tops. There's a 92 upper deck. Here's a 90 um, Bowman. Here's a 99 Bowman. Here's a 95 score. Here's a 88 Fleer stickers. Here's one of the Leaf Series 1 from I don't know, 90 or 91. I don't know. Here's a 92 Tops baseball. Here's one of the Fleer Ops because I bought like two or three cases of them. Uh, 91 Fleer, which everyone hates. A 90 Tops. A 90 upper deck, a 99 Fleer, and this is a 92 Pinnacle. So it's random. It would not be all those same packs, but none of the packs are repeated. Um, some packs have rack packs in, which kind of has three packs. It's basically just 200 plus cards. It's over 200 cards. Um, so you count up all the cards in the packs and wham, 210, 220, whatever cards. The thing is, these, these bulk mailers, because they fit in here so nice. The shipping is $7.90 on these. So, um, the flat rate mailers, I should say. They're flat rate. $7.90 anywhere in the country, so it can go all the way to California. Otherwise, the other stuff, then they weigh it and they charge you per destination, and it could cost you more. Like it was just that, I have a flat rate and I have one set price that I charge. And you're not the first one to ask about it. Other people ask about it. But I'm I'm looking at like you know twenty five dollars for this to get it going, um, and that includes the you know the shipping. So you know you got to think. Yeah, I got I got all these different cards, but is it really worth twenty five dollars? That's the thing. I gotta. I'm trying to look at it as from the part of a number one. Would it cost me to produce this? And to recoup my money, because I invested $4,000 in this company of mine, I bought all these cases. I bought all these boxes of cards. And then I broke them down. I've got 250 of these kits made out, ready to go. All I, all I have to do is finish the process of doing my eBay store. And then eBay takes, I forget what. Eric said, but they take a chunk. And then if you pay through PayPal, PayPal takes a chunk. You know what I'm saying? Like eBay takes a, like, I don't know, 10 or 15% off the top. So now that's $2.50 going to eBay out of that $25, you know? So I, I haven't figured all that out yet. That's, that's the thing. Is, am I going to be able to, I, I want to turn a profit, a little bit of profit. So I can reinvest it in the channel. That's the thing. I want to be able to reinvest back into the channel to continue to bring good content to everyone and grow the channel. That's the whole idea. We want to grow the channels, not just me. We want to grow everyone. I like to see everyone get to that thousand, that thousand subscriber milestone. That'd be great. So we're all getting. It's not much. It's like, I call it beer money because it's like hundred and fifty dollars before. Uh, taxes and all that, like Donald Blumdahl, I talked to him on, on phone 
early in the month and I talked to him to get ideas about stuff as far as um, how to set up Patreon. He's been doing eBay for like 20 years or something like that, he said. So he helped me get kind of settled in with my eBay and my Patreon. All I get is press a button now to make things really happen. I'm still waiting on I, I in my advertisement for this. I advertised free autograph with the first 200 sales. And I'm waiting on the other autographs to come back um, that I bought off of uh, a guy. I mean, that's $100. I paid a dollar a piece, so that's another $100 I'm investing, you know, and I'm giving it away for free. So that's $200 I'm giving away for free just to entice sales, you know. That's part of doing business, I guess. But, you know, that cuts into that profit margin. And I'm not a businessman. Yeah, so exactly. So, you know, Eric's been doing a long time, and I hate to say this, but Eric is – He's struggling right now. He's got I think he's overextended himself and he needs to get he needs to get employees in there now to help him continue to grow his channel because I think he himself has personally maxed out, physically maxed out. He's got school now. You know, he's a teacher, he's got to go to school. Um we all have to work, I would think. So um that's why I know someone asked him last week about um say everything about doing it full time and he finally said no nah, he, he still has to work and if and if things go sour the algorithm or whatever that that sells his product that re, uh, that uh, puts him out there in front of everyone else as far as when the suggestions go out for videos to watch like recommended for you we get them all the time oh yeah we recommend this um if that ever changed for some reason he lost, started losing subscribership, and he quit his job. Now he has no job. And he's got to go find another teaching position somewhere. And I'm sure they're not that easy to come by. So, so we got two open boxes here. I'm combining them to one. So yeah, I mean, some people suggest to do them box breaks and stuff like that but who wants to buy into this cheap stuff here you know and i've already invested my money and my business going the other way so to do box breaking i see what it's doing to other people and it gets to be too demanding i would think after a while people expect it all the time and look at tonight if you ever tuned into his channel his auction was going really strange you know, people, are, you got fake bidders in there and everything else going on. So that's causing chaos on your channel. I don't know. I'm not going to get involved in all that. Is it really worth it? That's the question. You have to ask yourself. Is it really worth it? What is this? Done with this box. Oh, so this is uh, another box I bought or one at an auction. It's minus the puzzle pieces, apparently. It's a whole dumbass set. I think I won this at an auction. <clears throat> so for you guys, guys that are new here, one thing I suggest is like no local card shops. And you have a little bit of money saved up or whatever, a couple hundred bucks. Go to um, check out Facebook Marketplace, what people are selling in your area. I know it's tough. The, the parts of the country are just tough because no one's in into the hobby. I get it. I get it. I go. Th I went to that here with all the uh, the shops that are not. I had uh, driving for you know in circles for an hour or two hours just to on National Baseball Card Day. You know. When you go to your card shop, um, just hit up like four shops, you know, took a couple hours to do that. Um, so, so what I do is I go around, I check Facebook Marketplace for anyone selling anything. And then you contact them, you message them and see exactly what they're offering what, and make your offers 
You don't have to buy it. You just make it an offer and go look at it. But make sure you take someone with you. Um, because, you know, people are people, are people, I guess. And sometimes uh, they think they can get away with whatever. Um, it just so happens this guy was nine miles from my work today. I was contacting him over the for like a week. And he said he had a buyer. But I saw the address still up after, you know, four more days. So I contacted him again and said, I'm still interested. Here's my final offer. And I started out at 250. His response to 250. And this is for, for 200,000 cards. Sight unseen. Um, I offered 250. But I'm still going to go look at them and decide whether I want them or not. And he said, oh, I turned down 350. And I said, all right, 375. A day goes by. He doesn't get back to me. He's thinking about it. Then he gets back to me and says, oh, I just had an offer of $600. Now, I've paid for another a lot earlier in the summer, a 210,000 card lot. And I got some really nice cards out of it. Um, $750. So when he tells me $600, I said, damn. Maybe he should have just... Taking my bid a little bit higher and said, all right, 625 and trying to outbid this person. But I didn't. I thanked them for at least entertaining my offers. But it was still up there after three or four more days. So I contacted them again. And I said, $400. It's my best offer. That's all I can do. <coughs> and he accepted it. He said, can you pick it up tomorrow? I'm like, okay. So that was yesterday. Today, I went to see the guy at his house. Now, normally when you go do this, you should take someone with you. Um, I talked to people at my work because it was only nine miles from my work. People, one guy happened to used to live in that neighborhood. He says, no, it's a very good neighborhood. You'll be fine. Um, informed my wife. Gave her the address of where I was going. I always let someone know where you're going if you're going alone, which I don't recommend. And um, my son, yeah, let's just get off track a little bit. My son used to do that with cars. He would buy cars and flip, uh, flip them, um, fix them up, and you know, flip them. And uh, but his brother-in-law, my son's brother-in-law, was a Philadelphia police officer, so he would always take him with him where he went. So he always had like a hired gun with him, like no, no shit, like. You're not going to try anything, right? Because I got this cop right here with me. Oh, and he's armed, by the way. And he stands there and he makes sure that people see his badge and his weapon. And nothing ever went wrong, whether that's because of that or not. You know, you just never know. You've heard all the horror stories about the uh, Craigslist crap. So Facebook Marketplace is like the new place to do people to do this kind of stuff and feel a little bit safe. You still meet in a public place. Um, this guy Rand I buy off of from time to time. Um, he's right now he wants to sell me a bunch of autograph cards like I just showed you. Um, he sold me last time he sold me like a hundred hundred cards like this, all autographs coming out of boxes and stuff like that, right? All like factory certified autographs, no TTM stuff. Uh, sold me a hundred of them for like $85. So <clears throat> contact me again, says, I got another lot of autographed cards. Do you want them? Are you interested? I'm like, yeah, I'm interested. But then this deal came up and I took this deal instead. I spent $400 on this deal. So I don't have like right now for this month, any extra money. I got to really schmooze my wife and she's not in the schmoozing mood right now. She wants, uh, she wants a shed, and she wants the cards moved into the garage, and the garage moved out to the shed. So that's my next project, to do that while still working a full-time job. So it's going to be fun. So I'm just straightening up here before I log off. Um, and the other question, I haven't even looked over it at the chat. Sorry, guys. I've been straightening up here a little bit. But these are, I don't even know. I like 
I think I went through some of these already. And, um, these are all, all autographs from different packs. Uh, this is a TTM here. There are some very few TTMs in here. These are mostly uh, this is a TTM that he got on a new card. I think I bought these down in South Carolina, some of those TTM ones. Um, but take a chance on the TTMs unless you know the person getting them or you get them yourself. Like I've gotten TTMs from, or not TTMs, in persons from uh, <clears throat> Jim Tomei, um, Pedro Martinez, when they were minor leaguers playing, I uh, was living in Las Vegas and their teams would come out there. I was at four blocks from the stadium. We'd go down, me and my boys, every night and watch baseball games. And a minor league park, great, great, uh, you know, atmosphere. If you've never been to a minor league game, I suggest going because it's all fun. Things are cheap. And, uh, you know, take the family. My wife worked nights. So it was just me and my two little boys. And we used to go every night, walk down to the stadium because we only lived four blocks away. And to this day, my one son still, he's 30-something years old. And he still talks about that one time that this one guy hit a home run and uh, he hit the scoreboard, like in that movie, um, The Natural. And... Uh, he still talks about it. It made that much of an impression on him. He loved it. So, that's about it, guys. Um, I don't know what else, else we can talk about. I mean, I do have work. I'm sure you guys got work in the morning. So, I'm going to get ready to log off here. And I will see you guys around i'm sure let me see what comments we have real quick i will just say goodbye and not answer any questions all right alex if you're still here have a good night brother if not thank you um tim uh oh all right major league hats i didn't even see you come in that's why i wish it would show who was who was logged in oh tim's been uh Major League Hats has been hanging out in the background this whole time. Chillaxing. That's cool. All right, Tim. Yes, catch you later if you're still here. Major League Hats. Yeah, I'm sorry, Tim, but basically what I did was I opened up five packs of uh, 91 score baseball. You can go back and watch the video if you want, but uh, spoiler alert, we didn't pull any mantles, so go figure, right? I don't know what the odds are pulling one, but I have 30. 35 packs. Yes. Cool. Don't forget to go check out my 750 subscriber giveaway, guys, and enter for that. Um, and tomorrow, tomorrow, um, go to, let me see, where is it at? Um, Big Country's Wheelhouse. Big Country's Wheelhouse channel. Click on his notification bell tonight or something so that when he posts a video, he won the 500 subscriber giveaway, and he's going to do the video tomorrow, or he's already done it, going to post it tomorrow, like the unboxing and stuff. Um, so I can't wait to see it. I mean, I know what's in there, but I still want to, you know, who doesn't like giving gifts and stuff to people? He won. He entered. He won. He met all the requirements. The video has only, like, been posted. My video has only been posted, like, a week ago. Uh, it's, like, eight videos back, counting this one, I think, on the playlist. And um, enter up, and who knows, you could be the next winner, and it's going to be a lot of good stuff. Um, first prize is uh, four boxes of cards, uh, 90 upper deck, 91 upper deck, uh, 91 Flare Ultra, and I think a 91 or 92 um, Pinnacle. I don't know what series, one or two. I had, had a case of each, so I was just putting the boxes in whatever. So that's that's what's going on there, and along much much other good stuff, some you know sports, Christmas ornaments, and some older Becketts, and some 
binders. Oh, I think there's a, a rack pack of 1972 Tops holiday rack pack in there. Um, so yeah, it's definitely worth, worth, uh, all you gotta do is follow the rules, enter, like the video, subscribe, make sure I can, you know, view the, that you're subscribed to the channel. Be living within the lower 48 continental United States. Um, and what else? Like, subscribe, comment, comment, like, well, what would you do? The question is, what would you do if you won the prize? And a lot of guys like, well, I would open it up on my channel and I would share it with, you know, my, my grandkids or my nephews or whatever, you know, whatever, whatever. It's yours. You could say you're going to take it out back and bury it in the ground in a time capsule. I don't care. It belongs to you. What you do is what you do with it. You can say one thing and do absolutely the opposite. You could turn around and give it away on your channel. Whatever. It's yours. You own it. I, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm just happy to give it away and, and, you know, hopefully draw in more viewership, more subscribership, and uh, help grow everyone's channel. Like everyone that's been here tonight said, so make sure you go and you subscribe to each other, get each other up, and uh, help everyone grow. Help us all grow because I think um, it's not much, but when you hit a 1,000 subscribers, you get a little bit of, money for uh, ad revenue and stuff like that it's like 150 dollars a month maybe and it obviously it bases off your view time and all that you have to maintain the view time and you have to meet the subscribership level um and then they tax it after that i think i talked to don he says it's like 138 dollars a month that's what Donald i think Donald gets i think don't quote me on that <clears throat> no wait donald that and i'm sorry i take that all back um, that was for his um, Patreons, and he has Patreons. So that's another thing I'm going to bring to the channel. I'm going to bring out some Patreons, and I'm going to um, probably pick up, and some of you guys probably heard this, do a Friends Mail Friday since the Jabs Brothers are giving up that portion of the channel, and I'm going to try to fill that void for um, everyone else. If they want to continue to do it, they can. Um <clears throat> I'm going to try not to grow too big like Eric did to where he <clears throat> can't manage it. Right now, he needs to hire some people. First thing I do is hire my wife and put her on the payroll. And she becomes a tax deduction for you, you know? You can't hire your kids because... YouTube would think you're exploiting children anyway. You don't want to do that. You have to hire an adult. And if any of you guys are in his channel tonight and watch his auction that he had, his first live auction, it was pretty chaotic, um, uh, to say the least. You had people in there fake bidding and stuff like that, which really makes it hard for everyone else who wants to try to do something like that. You know, fake bidders and not paying for your bids and stuff like that. But that's the route they want to take. <clears throat> I wish them good luck. And it probably, for Eric, it'll probably succeed. Because seeing the prices he was getting for some of those cards, it was like, wow. Any of you guys, were any of you guys in there? Were any of you guys bidders? I don't know. I wasn't. I was watching. I was watching the first hour plus. Um, but, wow, he was getting some crazy prices on some of them cards. I hope everyone paid up. If he did, he just made, I don't know, probably a couple grand tonight. Along with um, his... Um... Okay. And where you at, Alex? What state? You're out west, I would, I'm going to guess you're out west. Because it's so late here in the east. Yeah, it's almost 12.30 here. Canada. What part of Canada? Western Canada? Central? Eastern Canada? You can't tell me provinces because I would not know anyway. Whether it's Ontario or Quebec. And those are probably just cities and not um, territories. Toronto. So that's almost in the northeastern part of Canada, right? Towards the northeastern part, above New York. Yes. No. 
<clears throat> I work for a company. I work for a company whose owner was a uh, Canadian. And he owned the company down here that I worked for for a long time. And then he got sick. Um, and uh, the company is called Menu Pet Foods. And we made canned pet foods. And um, I remember the guy's first name was Robert. I don't remember his last name. Um, but everyone called him Robert. And um, he got sick and ended up having to sell the company because he got sick. And then it became privatized and... Pff, that was it. It went from being a nice family-owned thing to privatized. There still was it. They had a, they had a company in Canada, a factory in Canada, and they had a factory here in the in Pennsylvania, and then they had one out in Iowa, Ames, Iowa, was the other one that they built, brand new one out there. And then the owner got sick, and it just went downhill from there, and they became. Um, uh, publicly traded, no longer a privately owned company. They were privately owned. They bought it from Cadillac. It used to be Cadillac Pet Foods, and then um, Robert bought it, turned it privatized, sole owner, took pretty good care of the people and everything. But once it became public again, forget about it. I ended up leaving that company um, because of that reason. One of their reasons was it wasn't the same. But anyway. Okay, so you're from Ontario. Okay, well, I, I think international shipping's pretty high. And this, just so you know that this, um, unfortunately right now, because my channel is so small and I'm paying the shipping, um, uh, and just, I'm just leaving it open to um, people in the lower continental, the lower 48 continental United States. I, you know, I don't know what it would cost. Uh, what you know, I sent one package to Korea, a small box, and it cost like 23 bucks for like a, a box that was like right here. It was one of these seven, seven, nine, seven dollar ninety cent, uh, um, you know, a flat rate mailer cost. 23 or 4 bucks to send to South Korea because um, one of my followers asked for some um, Chanho Park cards so I gathered up 50 of them I wanted to make it like a one time deal send him 50 and um, did that and, but he he sent me a gift back and he called it a gift and I'm like alright well you know, whatever I, you don't have to he sent me some really super nice cards like they just, I sent him Chan Ho Park, and he sent me these really expensive um, 2019 Tops All Star Team cards, American and National League, and the Home Run Derby participants for this year. So I got two Pete Alonzo cards from the Home Run Derby set, and a Vladdy Jr. card, along with like a Bregman and a couple of other guys. But he just blew me away with like, dude, you just, you went way too far overboard with this. This is, I sent you, I mean, but he loved Chan Ho Park. Chan Ho Park was his guy that he PC'd. And he said in South Korea, it's so, so expensive. Cards are so expensive to get that he was just happy to get them. And I sent him a bunch of packs. I sent him, uh, I think 10 or 12 packs of cards, unopened random packs of cards too. But trust me, but he sent me just crushed where I sent him like beyond there was no comparison so I made it I made a um, a response video and it's posted um, showing what he had sent me and um, the um, he left a comment and I commented back on on his channel uh, thanking him because um, he does have his own channel. His, uh, his name is Lee. And uh, he's one of my followers. And uh, subscribers, I should say. And um, I thanked him in English. And I said, you know what? I got to go a little bit better than that. And I found a Korean translation for what I had typed in English. And I 
uh, also attached a Korean translation to make it a little bit easier for him. He did say that his English is not all that good, which I fully understand. Um, I would not want to have to go to South Korea and try to um, survive without knowing the language. So in his videos, he does like um, no talking. He just, all you see his hands going through cards. But he, from what I see, he does a lot of top end cards, like a lot of very expensive, nice cards. Like I think he, he broke a box of museum. Um, and a lot of that top stuff that you buy from the right directly from tops, um, like the living sets or whatever. So what you're seeing in front of you is just a bunch of autographs that I'm uh, trying to get set up to do or, um, give away free with the purchase of my product that I hopefully take time enough out of my busy schedule um, to sell on eBay and that's I know some of you guys have seen this product but this is the product I just got to get off my duff and finish up a couple things but basically it's just random free autograph and random autograph some of them are TTMs that just happens to be a TTM but I got like all these here that I've already got 100 set up with the autographs in i got another 150 sitting without autographs i just got to make sure i have enough autographs to fill them up i i don't think i have i might have 100 here so and i'm waiting on more there might be a little more than 100 here but because they're in top loaders it just looks like a lot <clears throat> and like i showed this too to the other guys, I was planning on signing off, but since we got some new viewers here, these are random packs that I was putting in there. It's supposed to be just a total of 200 plus cards in the box, random, random packs, random years. Not every box is going to have the same packs in. A lot of them are going to have a lot of the same, but you're not going to have a repeat pack. However, you may have a rack pack of say 87 tops and then you might have a pack of 1987 wax that's the only way you're going to get the same stuff and then you're talking wax versus rack and you get different ones in racks than you get in wax get some of those special um all-star cards and stuff like that so that's that that's the product i've been talking about and i haven't gotten off my duff to really do anything more with it 200 plus cards. The price is what I'm I'm still working out. I'm looking at a minimum of 200 plus cards for $25. And I pay the shipping or you pay partial shipping. I don't know. I got to figure it out because um, eBay takes their cut. A percentage of it goes to eBay and that that's going to cut into my, my paying of the shipping or whatnot. I don't know. But anyway. Yeah, so do I. Um, soccer practice, okay. All right, Alex. Yes, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Um, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna check out your channel right now and make sure I'm subscribed to you because um, you look like a new name. And check out your video. So let's see what we got here. I'm gonna go type it in here. Edo. Edo. All right, let's see what we got. No, I didn't. Oh, yeah, there you go. Are you still here, Alex? I see you have one subscriber. Two videos. No, this can't be you. Because you just said you put up one for your with your daughter. And this is three months ago. You know what? Copy. Oops. Mm. 
I'm just gonna copy and paste it. Your name. Oh, there's a lot of Alex, actually. But that's the one with just the A. That's you. Yeah, that's you. I oh, know. Do you have just an A or just for your for your um, avatar? I see one that's just an A with one subscriber. It's a blue A, one video. So this is you. All right, let's see this one here. Error lines. That's not it. So you did one with your video uh, daughter, and that's in Spanish. Here's another one. You have a very popular last name. Uh, that's Cummins Power. That's not it. Yeah, Interesting. This one was put up three years ago, so that's not you. Hmm. I'm having a hard time finding you. Yeah, I did a copy and paste. And you have no avatar. It's just, um, is it is it the purple A? Because I see, all I see is a purple silhouette here on my screen. Of September 15th. One month ago, one month ago. Three months ago, four years ago. Hmm. And you said your daughter's in it with you? Upper and lower. Yeah, I, I hmm. What's the title of your uh, video? Do you remember? Because if I, I can't go from here to your channel, it just wants me to report, move, put in timeout, hide user, or add as moderator. If I can't go from here, I have another browser page open. C-E-D-L. Yeah. You certainly have a very popular last name. You have, how many subscribers do you have? One video, but how many subscribers? Five or less subscribers.
Hmm. I'll yeah. I'll have to just wait till I close down my um my live feed, and then I'll be able to go back in and click on your name here and go right to your page. Because right now I'm getting oh our first card break. I found it. 21 views one day ago. Me and my daughter on a day to a card show. All right, gotcha. I'm not subscribed, but now you've got a subscriber. There you go. And I will click on your video. Um, so there show you go. this Sunday. There you um, go. You hear it? It is National Hockey Card Day today. Um, we got free cards. <laughs> you got free cards. Two free cards. Yeah, packs. Because it's daughter, National I, Hockey Card Day. Yeah, my daughter and I came in. Uh, All right. Show. I got you. She, I got you subscribed up. One of the dealers gave her uh, first a working card. I hope you're not getting an echo or anything nice, back from that. The, from the dealer. <clears throat> uh, you've already got um, is that 19, 26 views. 19, That's good. And you know what? People um, love kids. Believe, People love kids in their videos. The more you get your daughter involved, it's good. You know what I mean? You can have her help her. Like I have my granddaughter's help open the packs and stuff like that. Try to show them to the camera. But she's only three and a half. The other one's like two. So it's a little rough on them. All right. Catch you guys later. Preston, thanks for tuning in. Austin Matthews. Uh, says about yep. All right, Alex. Nice goals. chatting. Um, I'm gonna let you go. Nice I gotta thing. go because I have to get up early too, and it's already 12:40. Um, you know what time it is. You're in the same time zone. You gotta All right. Thanks a lot, time brother. Time. I got you subbed up, and I'm watching your video before I go to bed. Thanks. We're a big fan of this. Uh, Joy Bottle picked up one of his cards.